be stood at the gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to stab police. Crime is on the rise. Armed with a axe and a machete. Trying to break into two separate houses. But come at the hour. More unit, more unit. Come at the interceptors. Get off! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's elite. What's on? Alongside their pursuit drivers. Contact, contact, stand by. On target with their firearms unit. There's no hard way to fail us! In the air with their eye in the sky. Off and running, off and running. This is the front line in the fight against crime. This is police interceptors. I cannot believe we get paid to do this. Yeah. Coming up. Kev, 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 Kev. Go. A drink driver loses control. Oh my Jesus. Chris Percy struggles with a breath test. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath I analysis? I demand a rank according to mine. I demand the sergeant. And Tony gets back to nature. Where's all this gear? West Yorkshire has one of the highest arrest rates for drink drivers in the UK. That bar was expected, you failed that. And tonight, interceptors Kev Shaw and Chris Spenner Spencer are hoping to add to those statistics. It's 11 o'clock on a Saturday night, boobs are just starting to kick out. I imagine someone's going to try to save himself a fire in a taxi. Why not? Is it worth it? I don't think it is, but. Spenner has over 16 years' experience on the region's roads. His favourite subject at school was maths, and something's not adding up about the Skoda Octavia ahead. It's been flagged as having no insurance, and they pull up alongside. Spenner tries to get the lad's attention. He seems oblivious to the officers. That blinding light yeah. isn't attracts the attention, is it? Yeah. Kev tries a different approach. Uh-oh. But the bleary-eyed bloke isn't keen on a meet and greet and boots it. Kev, 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 Kev! Spenner hits the blues and puts the beamer into overdrive. Can run your five on big stop walker drive? Within moments, the driver is veering off road. Oh my god, go, go. He smashed through a fence, driven across a garden, but somehow manages to get back on the road. Get him, get him. Can't right. get him, can't, can't. The Skoda floors it over the speed bumps. X-ray Romeo 51 urgent vehicle fence stop Wetland Lane Bradford. The suspect's driving is so erratic, there's only one way this is going to end. <laughs> He's off-road again, but this time into a brick wall. Kevin sped a race to the suspect in case he does a runner. Get him. Yeah, is he alright? Is he alright? He's dazed. But it's not because of the crash. Come on. Oh my Jesus, Lord, how pissed are you? He appears to be blind drunk. I don't really need to cuff you, do you? So pissed. But he's still seen fit to get behind the wheel of a car and demonstrate exactly why drink drivers are so dangerous. An apology isn't going to cut it. So he's so sorry. That's not really a great answer, is it? 
with a suspect in cuffs. Get up. Keb needs to get him away from the stricken car. Get up. Get up. Get up. You're in oil. But the driver's so wasted, he can hardly stand up. He's done that. Stand up. Stay with me. The best place for him is in the back of the cop car. Oh, oh my god, he's steaming, isn't it? Pretty right, though, isn't it? He can't actually stand up. He's literally that drunk, he can't stand up. And he's driven through two gardens. What's your name? Look at me. Oh, I'm sorry. How much have you had to drink? The lad's so drunk, he's unable to answer how much he's downed. But there's one way to find out. I need you to blow into this. How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? So he's old enough to know better, and the gravity of the situation is beginning to dawn on him. No point crying about it now, is there? Put your arms down. Oi, grow up. Here, oi, put your hands down. Blow into this. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. No, you need to do a blow longer. Deep breath. You know you didn't try. Put your hands down, put your hands down. Oi. Deep breath, deep breath. Lift your head up. Thomas. 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 I'm so sorry. Oh, Jesus. The man claims to be sorry, but seems unrepentant by not blowing. Kev tries again. Blow into this machine. Just blow into this machine, then I know how, how we can deal with you. Blow into this machine. Blow into this machine. Right, that's yeah, fine. Right, refuse, you're under arrest for failing to provide, yeah, failing to stop dangerous driving. You don't have to say anything but may harm your defence if you men don't mention when questioned. Oh, something which will lead to a court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. He's failed to provide and turns out not to have insurance or a licence. And his evening is about to get even worse. Whose car is it? My boss. Your boss's car? Have you stopped? Does, does your boss know you've got it? Yeah. He, he, don't know me. he doesn't know you've got it. If the suspect has taken his boss's car without him knowing, he could also be facing taking a vehicle without consent. How, how have you got this car? Hello? But it doesn't appear that anyone's home and it's off to the nick. So we're going to take him up to Bradford, see if he'll provide a machine and they'll need to be interviewed regarding the offences. I can't believe he crashed the first time and then he's managed to get out of the garden and he's carried on and then he's taken this corner again and he's crashed into another wall. He, he won't wear any seatbelt and the airbags have come off and to be fair that's what's probably saved him from getting hurt, seriously hurt, that the airbags have deployed to stop him crashing against the steering wheel. So, um, yeah, he's lucky, he's lucky. But he's put himself in this position. The incident has drawn a crowd, and one of them was in the house where the man crashed. Just literally got into bed after having a midnight snack, and we literally just heard the loudest bang. Like, I'm shaking so much, but I was just like, oh my God, is everyone okay? But it's scary. I just hope that everyone's okay. Stay safe on the roads, it's not a joke. Someone is risking their life, and for what, to crash into a garden wall, it is ultimately down to road safety, and I think it's something that really needs to be worked on, especially in Bradford. Wise words. The suspect is transported back to the station and Spenner is dumbfounded by the man's actions. He's only had to turn left three times and crash twice. People might just chance it and have two or three beers. This, this guy's probably had all the beers. I don't, think, I don't think there is any beer left. He's going to be tested down the station, but just how much alcohol does this reckless driver have in his system? Come on. Out we come. Kev, Kev, Kev! Kev and Spenner have been in pursuit of a suspected drink driver. Oh my god. Go, go. He's driven through one garden and then ended up smashing into a wall. Oh my god. The boys believe he's completely bladdered. Oh my Jesus Lord, I'll piss to you. And after refusing to give a roadside breath test, he's been taken down the station to be tested on the evidential machine.
First up, to chat with the duty sergeant. Oh, is alright, Thomas? You speak English? Mm. Pardon? I did earlier. I did. <laughs> Tomas's previous understanding of English seems to have deserted him, but there's no hiding from what Spenner's found in his pocket. Spenner's just been searching him and has uh, found a little small bag of great green vegetable matter, which we believe is cannabis, so he's been further arrested for that as well. It's all too much for Tomas. <laughs> oh, Thomas, get up, for God's sake. Where's he gone? He's having a cry. Get up, come on, come on. Let's just stop being stupid now. It's now time for the test. However, he's still not playing ball. Yeah. How do you? You're not going to do it? No, I'm charged. You're you want to just be charged? Well, we're going to give you three minutes. You've got three minutes now to make a decision. The machine's still counting down. It's still your opportunity to provide. Yeah. All right, there we go. Right. He has a sudden change of heart, but has a total of three minutes to provide two breath samples. Come here. Stand here. Put your hand there and blow. Keep going, 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 stop. That's it. First one, sit back down. The legal limit is 35, and the first result comes back at 96. It's what? It's only three times the limit there. But in order for a valid test, he needs to provide a second sample. Can we do that again? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep... No, 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 no. What was that? What was that? But in order for a valid test, he needs to provide a second sample. You get one more go, Thomas. One more go. You've done it once, so there's no excuse you can't do it again. So, point your lips. Come on, quick, 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 quick. Last chance. Last one. Thomas has failed to blow on his second attempt. Again, go. Thomas, go. Come on. Come on, quick, 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 quick. Come on, are you going to fail? 10 seconds. Sorry, All right. Five. Sorry, man. No, it's fine. Sorry. Okay. It's a failure to provide. Is there any medical reasons why you couldn't do that? Just now, a little bit. What, you've hurt your chest now? A little bit. Maybe. He's provided one for sample. And then he's uh, suddenly developed a head chip. Hurty chest syndrome, which is now says he's preventing him from following the second one. Um, whether that's right or not, I've no idea. Well, we're getting seen by a nurse, but then I'll, I'm also asking him for a blood sample. With a potential injury, the police escort him to hospital. His safety has to come first. Right. Come this is two cops. It's going to be sat in A and E on a Saturday night. It's going to be absolutely rammed. For what? It's very frustrating. The Bloods came back two and a half times over the legal limit. He was found guilty of drink driving, dangerous driving, driving with no license or insurance, and possession of cannabis. He received eight months imprisonment, had to pay a victim surcharge of £140, and was disqualified from driving for 28 months. The hospital visit revealed the suspect had two fractured ribs. It's one drink driver off West Yorkshire's roads, but unfortunately, he's not the only one. Oh, look, do you reckon that's it there? Yeah, look like it. Chris Percy and Tom Gallick arrive at the scene of a crashed BMW. The car is a complete write-off, and it looks like everyone has legged it. How on earth has that come across here? Before joining the force, Chris was in the Merchant Navy and also a driving instructor. But whoever was at the wheel of the Beamer needs a few more lessons. I suppose we've got a gal and have a look, haven't we? Chris inspects the wreckage and this wise interceptor has a good idea as to the cause of the accident. They're probably looking at the, the glasses in the car, they've probably been drinking, they might have been taking drugs as well. The car is recovered. Oops. Oh, oops. The lamppost made safe. And Chris and Tom leave the scene. Yeah, we've seen. But 
there's no rest for the boys as they receive reports of yet another suspected drink driver. We've got a car crashed into the roundabout. Um, I think he's found us. He's still sat in his car and so admitted he's been drinking. So, who's on route to that? Find out what's happened. Chris approaches the roundabout and they spot a man in what they believe is the suspect motor. Strange, he's still sat in his car. Unless he's uh, trying to do something stupid. Just as they're approaching the car, they see the man exit the driver's door. Go get Go get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him, get him. The suspect walks away from the car, but Tom is onto him in a flash. Excuse me. Come here, come here, come here, mate. Hello? Come here, mate. You all right, mate? Did you ring us? I didn't ring you, no. Yeah, come and sit in that car. Okay. Anybody else in the car? You just grabbed me in the middle of the road. <laughs> Tom checks for passengers, and there's one of the furry kind. Oh, there's a dog. Oh, there's a massive dog in the car. Is it? Is it your dog? Hey. What's the dog called? Hey. What's your dog called? What do you mean? The man denies any knowledge of a dog, despite it being in the car he's just got out of. Chris is confused about the man's behaviour. Why have you just sat in there and waited for us to arrive and then decide to run off when we get there? That's odd behaviour. The lad is denying having been in the vehicle. You, you literally just ran across the road and grabbed me. You got a car keys? From what vehicle? From this car. You just come out from. How have I? You've literally right. just picked me up from round corner. Yeah, no problem. There. As they saw him leave the car, Chris wants a breath test. I just want you to uh, work this machine for us. Are you going to do it? Are you going to give us a sample of breath? However, the man insists he's not been in the car. I've seen you get out of that car. I so have. I have as well. And I, w I require a sample of breath you from you for well. analysis, OK? And if you right, refuse... Okay. Listen, so you listen to me. Listen let's to me. Rewind a minute. You two have seen me walk out. Of yes. The let's rewind a minute. Chris and Tom have seen the man in the car, and the camera has also caught him exiting, but he won't back down. So I've just walked We've seen that we've car seen you get out of that car. Decision. It's all on camera. How have you? Show me camera. Right. Are you refusing Show to give us a sample of you just see me? Are you refusing to give us a sample of breath? Are you going to burn to this machine? Until you have shown me that you've seen me out step out of that car, I'm not doing anything. But there's no instant replay for this chap, and Chris is left with no choice. You're not going to blow into this machine, are you? No, I'm not. I'm, right, what? OK. I'll blow into it. At this moment you in time, you're under arrest. What for? Under Section 4 of the Road Traffic Act. Pass him your arm. What for? And the roadside breath test isn't the only thing he's resisting. Before he starts hurting me... Listen, you're under arrest now. What for? Stop resisting. What are they doing? For driving over prescribed limit. I'm not driving anywhere. They managed to get him cuffed, but he's still acting up. Look how tight that is. You're refusing to cooperate with us. Refusing to cooperate? You know, you've been That's, argumentative. I am yeah. now... The man seems fine with Tom. Your mate here, look. He's no problem. But not a big fan of Chris. No. You want to argue, don't you? Is it better? If you want to cause a problem, that is better, mate. Thank you very much, mate. You're a good man. He's a bad one. Good cop, bad cop good routine, bad cop. yeah. Yeah. You're right, stood there with him. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's fine. He's fine. I'm relaxed. Some strange behaviour this. A van arrives to take him down the nick. And good cop breaks the bad news. I'm, I'm walking you, you're going to be taken to Bradford Police Station. I'm going to be taken to Bradford. What for? You want a quick pat down? Quick you pat got down. Your pockets, fella. I've got nothing at all, Good mate. Lad. And you are going to look, no matter what I say. What have I done wrong? Excuse me. What have I done wrong? Come on, mate. The suspect is still denying being in the car, and he doesn't seem very keen on getting in the van either. Don't tell me. Like, getting in. Wrong. Oh, look, I'm being on, pushed in, fam! I'm being get pushed in! in. Get, get your feet in. in. What have I done wrong? Get your legs in. What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? 
Tom escorts the suspect downtown, and Chris is left to deal with the canine that's currently locked in the car. What are we gonna do with this dog? <laughs> he thinks the suspect dumped the car keys. However, they're nowhere to be seen. But help is at hand. It's locked and there's a dog in the car. <laughs> I could pop a window. No. I was to do that for you. You're a beauty, aren't you? Hey, look at you. We've got someone coming for you. The dog is on its way to the police kennels. The car is heading to the recovery yard, and Chris is station bound. Let's go. Where the man is in the evidential breath test room. Have you brought my service record up? I haven't. I don't no. know anything about that. The suspect claims to have a military past. Chris tries to run through the situation. OK, you're under investigation because you're unsuspected of being in charge of a motor vehicle on the road. Since the time of the alleged offence, consumed or used any of the following things, and if so, what? Alcohol or other drink? But there's a problem. I'll speak to military police only. The man is once again refusing to cooperate. Give me a rank of the military, and I will do what I am told. Chris tries to soldier on. I require you to provide two specimens of breath for analysis. No! By means of an... No! Device. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath, breath for an analysis? What rank are you? Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath for I analysis? I demand a rank according to mine. I demand a sergeant! I take it that's a no. The man refuses to provide a sample, and it's been a bizarre encounter for the boys. He's up and down. One minute he starts to calm down, the next minute he's violent and angry, and he's already disqualified from driving, so it looks like he's having some, some long-term issues. Strange behaviour, isn't it? Yeah. The crashed BMW was reported stolen by its owner. It wasn't recovered, and was therefore sent to be scrapped. It couldn't be proven the suspect was the driver of the car. However, he was convicted of failure to provide. He received 135 hours of unpaid work and was disqualified for 42 months. The dog was reunited back with its owner. Coming up. Move up, move up, move up. The interceptor swoop on a dodgy motor. Bob. And Tony comes to the aid of a naked driver. Put these on. You're going to put these on. I won't, no. It's a chilly Friday night, and interceptor Tony Rouse is blue lighting to an incident a few miles away. Roads are quiet anyway. Unusually so for a Friday uh, night. Tony has been on the force for 15 years and says the best part of being a copper in West Yorkshire is the scenery. Tony's seen most things in his working life, but the next piece of scenery even takes him by surprise. <laughs> what the going on here? Oh, Jesus. I am here, I'm on the phone, I'm blinking right. again. I'm getting worse. You feel, if, honestly, there's something bad going on. Is it going to happen to them. With local officers dealing with the other incident, Tony turns his attention to the naked man. Right, I'll put, just let me get van off at road. Brilliant, thank you. Where's all this gear? Tony's immediate concern is the man's welfare. Oh, buddy, what's going on? Is this all your gear here then? Yeah. You're going to put some. Yeah, I can, yeah. Not a problem, Chief. Where then? Every time we're going near the clothes, you're getting worse. He tries to get the lad back into his clothes. You're going to put these on? You're going to put these on? I won't, no. Mate, quit away from me, please. All right. How have you come across him? Because he was driving the key flip. Right. He was driving the key flip. So that's his car? Yeah. Right. It seems the naked man was giving the other man a lift, but felt hot, 
pulled over, then stripped off. Despite it being winter, the driver is still refusing to get dressed. I think I'm not feeling... I feel ill. You're probably cold, lad. I'm freezing. Right. I'll tell you what, shall I give you my coat? Are you going to wear my coat? Yeah. Till somebody gets here, you know? Yeah, lad, put that on. You must be freezing. I'm freezing now. I've got my clothes on. I don't know what I've for reason. Why don't you sit in your car? I don't know. Every summer went wrong. I felt myself burning up. Right. It was really weird. I was normal in a minute. And then I was burning myself up. I went by some issues. The man's behaviour is bizarre, but the interceptor's concerns are first and foremost for people's well-being, so Tony updates the ambulance crew. Hello. Yeah, he's um, acting uh, a bit out of order, let's say, but he's still with no gear on. Um, he's obviously freezing cold. Lovely, thank you. Cheers then, bye. He got out to check his car. I started burning up. The next mate, he felt like he was burning up. He just acting all his buzz up. Right. Are you putting them on, kid? You aren't taking out, have you? No, no. Right. He denies taking any drugs. The weird thing is, yeah, when he took my car off, I felt all right, and then I felt putting back on. It was, it was proper weird. It was like um, I was wearing a microwave. You definitely had techno. Definitely. Backup arrives, and they try to persuade the man into the relative safety of the van. I'm not going to get it. Well, we get uh, ambulance to you. Feel safe as it is. You're going to feel. We'll leave door open. You're just sitting there, at it, way, and then you're not stood on floor because it's cold, isn't it? I'll sit there. Well, I'll I'll that's not. You know, we're gonna leave door open for you, kid. With the lad being taken care of, Tony runs some checks on the car. Can you just run vehicle through while I'm here, please? That is a Skoda Fabia. <laughs> Insurance not held. No reports this time. Yeah, received it. Just confirming uh, MOT expired, no insurance shown. That is correct, sir. The driver has no MOT, no insurance, and still no clothes on. The paramedic's arrival is a welcome sight. Yeah, we will. Just, they're just parking up, kid, and then they're going to come over. All right. With the temperature dropping, the ambulance is the best place for him. hospital the man claimed to be having a panic attack and was later discharged however he didn't have any insurance or MOT and received eight points on his license and was ordered to pay 811 pounds in fines and costs stand by he's gone off the road out 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 bailing out and running an all too common sight for West Yorkshire's interceptors are cloned cars they're the original plates for it this is when the number plate of a car is copied and used on a similar vehicle, usually to hide that it's stolen or lacking any documents. These cloned vehicles are often then sold on by criminals to unknowing buyers as legit cars. Stephen Bobo Wright and Nick Priestley are out on patrol when news comes through on the radio of a cloned Audi that's been spotted. Uh, there was an APR hit. 2204. It's believed to be a cloned vehicle. So we are not a million miles away from where it's likely to come out. Nick is a member of the Rhodes Policing Unit and before joining the force was a welder. His reason for becoming a police officer? He hated welding. With 23 years experience on Bradford's roads, he knows just where to plot up to give them the best chance of intercepting the Audi. Alongside Nick is Bobo an advanced driver with size 16 boots. His pet peeve is burglars. But car cloning criminals are a close second. Yeah. Lane two. 
the suspect car comes past. It's uh, lane one, coming towards Shipley. Uh, coming to lights uh, at this speed. The Audi pulls up at the red light. Bobo now has fellow interceptor Andy Howarth behind them. Come around and get it now, mate. It's tea pack time. Okay, mate, coming now. Move up, Bobo. Move up, move up, move up. Nick is out of the car and onto the driver in seconds. Name. My name's Nick. Just put these handcuffs on for the time being, all right? Just for my safety more than anything else at the moment. Oh, there is an issue with this vehicle, which we will sort out when we are over. Just give me a hand. Just put your phone in. Just... The suspect is cuffed and put in the back of the car. It's a textbook stop, although the Audi has knocked Andy's car. I know Andy's had a coming together, but it worked really well. It stopped for us, we had a position to stop it. Andy got instructions to come round, and it went, Andy were perfect to be fair. Bobo moved up well, so it's not getting out. So this pursuit stopped before it even started, which is what we want. It worked really well for us, so uh, we're happy with that. Nick takes the lead in the questioning. That vehicle, we suspect, is a clone vehicle. It's on false plates, and we suspect that it may be stolen. Okay, that's what we're, that's what we're here. Right, okay. The thing is, that's what we're saying at the moment because, um, and if you are a genuine purchaser, yeah. Yeah. then we can sort that out also. Yeah. All right. The lad claims to have just bought the car for a bargain price. Bobo runs a check using the car's chassis number to reveal its true identity. And the reason it's been cloned soon becomes apparent. No keeper, no insurance, no MOT. It's, uh, it's just been, it's had its identity changed to make it look insured um, so that it can sort of drive around with immunity from, from cameras and, and make him look legal. And clearly it's not. With over a million drivers without insurance on UK roads, this uninsured motor is going off-road. Car gets seized. The cheap car is going to cost the lad heavily. OK, it's a taxi, it's a get it booked in for an MOT. And you need to um, get, get the plates made up and insurance. And plates. So you've got, and you've got the recovery costs and the storage costs. The suspect is also going to be prosecuted for no insurance. All in all, he's not had a great evening. Someone once said to me, if a deal seems too good to be true, chances are it is. But it's not all bad news. Do you want an ice cream? I appreciate it, lift it up. I can't do that, I can buy you an ice cream. Yeah, that's all right. Come on, I'll get you a coffee. Right. Come on. Flight safety, I don't know. He, he says he bought it a week ago. He's just fallen on hard times, a little bit desperate. He's, he's needed to get around and he's, he's been offered a cheap motor and he's, uh, <clears throat> he's chanced it and he's, uh, he's been caught out. And we'll have a car taken away and it's one, uh, one more uninsured driver off at road for now. No further action was taken in relation to the cloning. However, he was given a ticket for having no insurance. Officers Tom Powell and Mark Davey are making their way to the M1 for motorway duty. It's a Saturday and Mark is in good spirits. Push your lips and whistle, that's the thing. You've got to stop singing now, Mark. Mark is an ex-security officer who joined the police for the greater good. His secret talent is telling rubbish jokes, but not singing. You're not like the singing voice. I'm just wondering if there's a, an offence code on here that I could print out a tour for you for. What, for singing? It's not that bad. Mark, singing might not be an offence, but not wearing a seatbelt is. She got a seatbelt on, front seat passenger. They've clocked a lady not wearing a seatbelt. Is it on the pillar? It's not on. It's not, is it? Oh, seatbelt's on, a little late now though. Mark pulls the Ford Focus over onto the hard shoulder. Tom introduces himself. 
Hello, do you want to just jump and get back in our car and talk on the chat for a second, please? Yes, please. There's a male driver, a young child, and the lady without the seatbelt is offered a seat. Can I just grab a seat in the back, just on that side for me, please? Mark starts proceedings. Good afternoon. And the lady knows what's coming. So the reason we stopped you? The seatbelt. Yeah. Any reason for not wearing it? I just find them uncomfortable. But with over a quarter of people killed on UK roads last year not wearing seatbelts, Mark has no sympathy. OK. Have you ever caught your hand on a cheese grater? Yeah. You have. Did that hurt? Yeah. Yeah. So imagine whizzing through that windscreen and across the, the road. How do you think that would be? Would that be more uncomfortable than wearing a seatbelt? Yeah. Yeah. Formality-wise, I just need to advise you that I'm reporting you um, failing to wear a seatbelt as a passenger in that vehicle today. The seatbelt charge is sorted. We could be looking at more issues here. But Tom has spotted that the car is insured to an older woman rather than the young man driving. Super, thank you. It's his turn in the hot seat. Can I have a moment of your time, please, sir, as well? Come this side for me. There you go, mate. Jump on in there for us. Good afternoon. How are you? Okay. Is it? Is it? Yep. Whose car is it? It's from Mum's. I'm just using it because my car's in the garage. Right, OK. But I am covered at a dryer because I checked the insurance before I drove it. You're covered on your own vehicle, are you? Yeah, uh, yeah. What's the red to that? The lad's car is in the garage, so he's using his mum's. He claims his own policy ensures him to drive other cars on a third-party basis for seven days. Mark runs a check. You're allowed to drive other vehicles, no. It says I'm not. Yeah. It says I'm covered for seven days if it's in the garage getting fixed. Well, bear with us. Do you think you are insured? Truth, be, be truthful with me I'm now. I, I generally yeah. think I am insured. Like I said on my thing, policy says that I was covered for seven days if my car was getting fixed. He shows them his insurance policy. However, Tom spots a problem with the man's claim. What's that suggestion? It's not the garage that's lent you the car, is it? No, my mum, is it? Your mum's lent you the car. It's not a car. It's not a courtesy car owned by the garage, is what we're saying. So it would appear at the moment you are using that motor vehicle sure. without any third party insurance held against it. He's driving uninsured, so the car will be seized. But they're not leaving the young family stranded. Tom drives them to the local services while Mark follows on behind. For the moment, he's giving the lad the benefit of the doubt. I think it's just an oversight on his part, thinking that he's insured to drive a car that his mum's lent him because he's read potentially something incorrectly on his insurance policy. But after running further checks, Mark discovers the lad has previous for driving without insurance. You're going to need to be um, basically reported for court. Six points already? Well, you've got the six for the no insurance already. Was that not, uh, not some uh, provision like that, though? Which, uh, carry on? Yeah. Does it? Then that's why, then, it has to be a summons to court. You grab what you need to. Have you got the key on you? Mark now thinks the lad might have been telling porkies. He's already got six points on his licence for no insurance. The impression I got is that he knew that he wouldn't be insured. Of course he did. But he was going to chance it. Silly Billy. The car is recovered and the family wait to be collected. The lady without the seatbelt was given a ticket. The driver was reported for driving with no insurance. He was fined £811 and received eight points on his licence. Still to come, we discover why Sophie has to buy the entire team iced buns. Yeah, we all make mistakes. No doubt I'll be told that's a bon offence. Everyone makes mistakes. Go home and read the highway code and have a look at what it says about parking on a hill. Yeah. But when a West Yorkshire interceptor makes one, there's a price to pay in the form of buying iced buns for the entire team. Anything that brings the department into disrepute 
something as simple as maybe driving down a bus lane, lo losing some property. Part of banter. Uh, yeah, it bus. really is to be the small team that we've got. Uh, and you know, you put it, put your hand up and say, I got it wrong, I'm bringing buns in. What I've learned very quickly when I came onto traffic is that you bund if you do, and you bund if you don't. And I once got bun for bringing the wrong type of bun in. How bad's that? Cam got bun for bringing biscuits. Yeah, you can't bring a biscuit in because a biscuit's yeah. not a bun. He got double bun for that. So you get double bun? Yeah. The team are straight out of the traps and hoping to avoid any bunnable offences are Chris Harding and Sophie Hawkswell. The best thing about a Saturday late shift is we haven't got any traffic to contend with for the first couple of hours of the tour, so you can really get out and play straight away. Sophie joined the force in 2008. She describes her funniest police moment as leaping over a fence and landing straight onto a bin. She's not planning on any falls from grace this afternoon. NB53. They spotted an Audi without a front number plate. Sophie runs the reg and it comes back as having no insurance and being registered out of town. Malcolm. In Stockton on Tees. Sophie is out to investigate. No, then are you doing your right? Hello, yes, I am. Okay. Is it yours? Yes, my yes. Have you got insurance with the, for the vehicle? Yes, yes. I just want to come and take a seat in back. It's uh... Have you got your driving license on you? Yes, yes, it's in the car. I can go to take it. No, it's all right, I'll go get it. I'll go grab it. Whereabouts is it? It's in the centre bit. Yes, yes, yes. It's there. Cool. Take a seat in there. The man claims to have insurance and a license, but something doesn't add up. I was gonna say is um it's, yeah, for the, the name is given me, it doesn't match that. What insurance have you got to drive that? Sorry? Insurance? Yes, he says, yeah, I have insurance. He insists he has insurance and also has an explanation for his reg plate. I don't have the plate number because uh, two days ago I made an accident in Oxford. He's been driving around for two days without a number plate and there's no excuse for Chris. We stood Get a plate put on it. You shouldn't be driving it without a number plate on the front. I can drive for, for a number plate? No, you need a number plate on the front. Ooh. However, the more serious issue is his lack of insurance, although the man is adamant he's covered. I have insurance, sir. I pay £246 per month for this car insurance. With who? Sorry? With who? Me alone. No, no, who, what's your insurance company? Uh, i show you right now. He's either a very convincing liar, or there's another explanation. Oh, you've put wrong plate in. I have the phone in the car. I Sophie's have... entered the wrong registration into the computer. <laughs> this might change everything. Chris enters the man's actual reg, and they await the results. Stand by. Sorry, I have my five accident in Oxford. Sorry, I, 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 I might have put the wrong details into the uh, computer. It could be a reprieve for the driver and a possible bun fine for Sophie. And the result is... Nothing should. <laughs> should put a wrong digit in. I'm sorry. I've put the wrong registration no worries, plate into no the vehicle. Yeah, we all make mistakes. Um, I've put through the wrong registration plate when I'm running through. So it is insured to the guy that we've got in the car. Um, so we'll let him off for that one. No doubt I'll be told that's a bun offence. Um, but... We, you know, he's going to get reported for the fact that he doesn't have a, a registration plate and he's quite clearly known about it for a few days from what he said. So it's a bun fine for Sophie, but a less tasty one for the suspect. How much? £100. <laughs> it's going to be reported for consideration being prosecuted for driving without a front number plate. You don't have to say anything about Miami Defence if you do not mention now something which you like rely on the car. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. No, sir, I'm guilty. I oh. don't have plate number. It's my penalty. You too. Oh. Thank you. My Cheers. Have a nice day. The suspect was given a ticket and a fine for not displaying the correct registration. As for Sophie, the investigation is ongoing. I've just been advised by Chris that he's not a bun offence. However, um, I might have to put it to the rest of the team a bit later on. Being the sergeant, I probably will have to bring buns in later on in the week.
at the gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to stab police. Crime is on the rise. Armed with a axe and a machete. Trying to break into two separate houses. But come at the hour. More unit, more unit. Come at the interceptors. Get off! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's elite. What's that? Alongside their pursuit drivers. Contact, contact, stand by. On target with their firearms unit. In the air with their eye in the sky. Off and running, off and running. This is the front line in the fight against crime. Get on the floor! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! This is police interceptors. It's just another day in paradise. Coming up. Yeah, going uh, jumping out of the car with the drugs. A curb jumping courser. Then there, there. Get Big H on the run. Power and power. Give me the ride now. Give me the hands now. A rude awakening for a wanted man. This is the hand, please. Show yourself. Yeah, and yeah. many hands make light work. Protect all you. It's a dummy, yeah? The secret weapon in the battle to keep villains off our roads is the proactive intercept, or pit team. Armed with high-powered unmarked beamers, they hunt in packs and use key intel to launch preemptive strikes on bad guys. A lot of our assets are visible and marked up police vehicles. But we do have covert vehicles as well. There's quite a few of us out tonight. You know, there's. Um, We've got six cars out tonight. Six cars, on our yeah. Team. Yeah. Two in each car. Yeah. Plenty of bodies. Strength in numbers, isn't it? It is. It is. And, uh, if we stop a car, there's four people in a car. We can just overcome them, can't we? You know, we can all hands on deck, and we've got everybody detained. It's rush hour. Yeah, vehicle bounce back up my road. I'll the red corsa. And the pit team's in pursuit of a Vauxhall Corsa that's failed to stop. Yeah, I'm going there, jumping out of the car with the drugs. A cloud of white powder chucked out of the window could explain why. Odds are it's not self raising. Speed is currently 6 0. Just gone onto the uh, roundabout. Stand by. The little Corsa is no match for the cop's beamer. But this lad's feeling adventurous. The runaway is wreaking all sorts of havoc. And after hanging a sharp left, He's met with a frosty reception. A have a go hero who's clearly no softy. The biggest obstacle now is the rush hour traffic. Not a problem for the courser who risks it all with a reckless move. Approaching the junction standby. The left, the left. The suspect salutes the cops for keeping up. But he needs both hands to pull off his next trick. Before finally picking a lane. 
vehicle. Yeah, fuck off and grab the vehicle. Faced with a wall of traffic, he plays chicken with an oncoming car. And his luck nearly runs out. Just approach it, Tommy Watts Junction, just stand by. The pursuit driver is T Pack trained. But rather than box the Corsa in, he's got another idea. Get some, see if we've got some stinger tags in there. It's too far, we are looking for stinger tags. He calls in the cavalry, putting out the shout for a stinger team to take out the tires of the runaway Corsa. The left left of the old way, back road of Tommy Watts. I don't know where that is. Out on the ring road, pit legends Stefan Leischuk and Harry Big H Jeffrey have got the tools and the talent. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. All they need is a spot to strike with the stinger. If Harry can throw the bed of spikes across the roundabout, the course's tyres will be mincemeat. India 2-3, we've got uh, Stinger at roundabout with Harvester Pub. The pursuit is just half a mile away. You coming towards? Yeah, it's coming this way. Yeah, it's just continuing uh, straight on uh, towards that uh, location. Speed is uh, 7 0. Straight on, and it's game over. Just gone wrong way. Um... Other way, other way. The course has gone the wrong way up a slip road and avoided the stinger. But the pit pursuit driver still has him bang in his sights. Oh, there he goes. Go. And now the suspects run into yet more cop cars. The net is closing in and he's hurtling towards a roundabout that's thick with traffic. In South Leeds, a curb jumping Corsa has led interceptors on a wild and reckless rush hour pursuit. He's driven full tilt towards a traffic jam. And this time, there's no way through. It's uh, got a crash crash. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One last shot at Demolition Derby and he's bailed out. And interceptors are straight after him. And when they think the coast is clear, one, two, three, four passengers swiftly disappear, but for how long? Providing backup to catch them, pit unit Steph and Harry. Four hours standing there. Four hours standing down there. Right. Yellow t shirt. Yellow t shirt and girls. Yeah. We've just been putting in direction at four runners by four. After their failed stinger attempt, there, there, there. they've got the bit between their teeth. Get a good, get a good get a good one. Power in, power in. Give me now. Give me hands now. I'm down your back. Get on that wall. I'm down your back. I'm down your back. You walked up, mate, suspicious theft in motor vehicle. Yellow T-shirt versus Big H. No contest. The game's up for the other passengers too. So why were this lot on the run? Who, who, who robs a 1.2 horse, sir? Jesus Christ. I'm surprised what people steal. Yeah, I, 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 I can understand what you're saying, but Jesus Christ. Well, same logic. If it, wanted, if it were just insurance, I'd already take a chase. Uh, you asked the driver? I want a driver. <laughs> he wasn't behind the wheel, but he is wanted for breaching a court order, though he's more worried about a wee problem with his trousers. I went back in car as well, man. I, I, I'm a glass of strongbow with me. That's what I, that, I pissed myself. It's a glass of strongbow, man. Cops have finally nabbed the driver further up the road and confirmed the car isn't stolen. However, they've discovered the driver has no insurance and no license. Oh, what do you think of that guy's driving? Uh, tremendous, wasn't it? <laughs> Chuckles might find it funny, but it's no laughing matter for the cops. Take this lad's stupid risks. It's rush hour, Friday tea time. 
and they drive like absolute idiots. They'll, they'll go over grass verges, they'll go wrong side of carriageways, they'll go wrong way around round about, putting all these innocent members of public's lives uh, at risk. All for the sake of something as stupid as no insurance or no license. Absolute idiots they are. The driver was convicted of dangerous driving. He received a 14-month prison sentence and was disqualified from driving for 19 months. The passenger who couldn't hold his strongbow got a further stain on his character, a three-day extension to his existing community order. It's not worth the risk. If the blue lights come on, it's simple. The message is simple. Stop. Drug driving is the bane of the interceptors. Last year, a million Brits admitted getting behind the wheel whilst under the influence. And one in six drivers killed on our roads have illegal drugs in their system. And their chief weapon in the war on drug drivers... Can you just lean forward for me so I can get some saliva? I need to get it from the tongue and sides of your mouth, all right? So... ..is a plastic lollipop that has them licked. There's a positive line there. Drug wipe's fantastic. It's nice and simple. Just need a bit of saliva from you at the side of the road. and gives us a reading as to whether there's uh, cannabis or cocaine in that system. They are efficient and we are using a lot more of them. They're becoming another effective tool in, in getting dangerous people off the road. It's 11.30 on Friday night. Party time for some. But interceptors Andy Howarth and Bob Hoyle have work to do. But there's no permitted drivers or anything found. A fiesta with four lads inside has caught their eye. It's not registered to, say, to insure the address or anything. Let's see what it is, isn't it? They decide it's worth a pull. Hello, mate. Come and join us. Bring your ID if you've got some here. The driver seems relaxed and happy to step into Bob's office. Hello. All right, buddy. How are you doing, you all right? Yeah, not too bad. Is it your car, mate? It's my boss's car. Thank you. Who do you work for? Uh, my brother. Have you got some ID with you? I've got my bank card with me, buddy. Meanwhile, Andy doesn't need a sixth sense to crack this one. Who's that cannabis? Car stinks of it. Um, are you allowed to just like root for us? Yeah, section 23 at Misuse of Drugs Act. Things like grinders tends to give us grounds to believe, especially when there's a smell of recent use of it. So, yes, I am entitled to search through his car and I will be doing. After almost 25 years on the force, Andy knows the law and loves laying it down to would be legal eagles. But he just love it. Have you been smoking cannabis at all? No, but my, friend's, my friend is. It was earlier. Because you, you smell quite heavily of it. Sorry. Car stinks of cannabis. Yes. And there's a grinder in the dash. Yeah, have you got a drug wipe? I should have a drug wipe. Bob needs to check the driver out. You say you don't smoke it yourself? No, I, I, do, I do, but I haven't had any today. OK. All right, OK, just stick your tongue out for us, mate. Come forward a bit. The drug wipe can detect cannabis and cocaine in eight minutes, so the driver won't have to sweat for long. Because I'm going to search you, I have to make a record of that search. Part of that record is your clothing, so I'm making a note of your clothing. The car's going to be searched as well, so if you want to, if you want to pop stuff behind you, that's fine, crack on, but we'll find it. Eli Dandy has clocked some shifty shenanigans in the back seat. The two lads seem to be trying to stash something. Next, jump out. Right, mate, if we just jump out that way, we'll have a look where you've been sat. Oh, look, a little bit of white powder. Is that what you were stuffing down back at seat? Well, he wasn't looking for loose change. I told you I'd be looking down back at seat, cos there's another little bit of white powder there. What have you found? From white powder, yeah. Well, just so you know, mate, I'm a builder, look, I've got concrete all over me, yeah. so it could be that. So you've got concrete? All over me. You keep concrete in white bags? Um, that looks like cocaine? No, you don't. No, you don't, do you? Good try, I'm liking it. You really, you really are trying to look after your mate, aren't you? 
he can try all he likes, but unfortunately the why it comes back positive. It has come back positive though for a bit. Trace of cannabis, but also trace of cocaine as well. well I don't, I don't do anything like that. So right, I mean, it, like I say, it is a, a very basic test, but what, what, it, and it gives an indication that you've got some in your system. How positive is the line? Though? That's what I want to. Well, it, it doesn't matter whether it's faint or whatever. It can just say it's positive there. Okay. That's it. It doesn't tell us anything about how much. I've just got to tell you, you're under arrest at the moment. You'll be taken to a uh, police station for the purpose of giving a blood test and then that'll be sent off and we'll wait for the results to come back, OK? okay. A blood test should settle the matter. You're walking cos he's locked up. Sort your sends out. Ta-ta. While the builder and his buddies sling their hook. There's only a little bit of cocaine. We'll never prove whose it is, but it's in his car, so he's got to answer for that. So, three delightful customers. Just having it, working lads, having a beer and a bit of a smoke and a bit of cocaine, like you do on a Friday night. Walking now, oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Drug driving can carry a hefty fine, a 12-month ban and a six-month prison sentence. Uh, this is his blood sample. Uh, so we'll package this up. It's all sealed in a, an envelope here and that gets sent off to the forensic lab. So we'll see what's, uh, what his levels are and if he's over the specified drug limit. Results will be back in a few weeks. It's now a waiting game. He says he doesn't do it, he doesn't, he doesn't take it, but it's in his system for whatever reason, so um, we'll just wait and see a couple of weeks' time. It might be by osmosis. By Oop. being with his friends, it might have just, like, leached into him. Yeah, yeah, could have been. Yeah, could have the suspect's bloods did come back positive, but when it got to court, the case was discontinued. Last year, cops in the UK recorded almost 600,000 domestic abuse-related incidents, with 75% of all victims reported to be women. Thank you. Interceptors Sophie Hawkswell and Chris Basto are blue lighting it to a residential address in Leeds, following reports of a serious domestic incident. The male there's threatened to um, knock any police officer out that comes to the Just door. Just sharp on ten and ask them how far their unit is off. A man has reportedly been behaving aggressively to his female partner, and there are kids in the house. He's got previous for attacking cops, and a firearms unit is already en route. Can we suggest a suitable RV point? Um, then we'll all want one together. Interceptors like Chris rarely get called to domestics, but he's taser trained, so could be useful backup if things go south. It was pointing to the right hand side. Someone's waiting for them outside the address. He's not getting out, he's been clenching his fist and said, When you're walking, he's going to batter you on. What name like. is it? Yeah. Who else is in? Uh, my mum. The 18 year old lad says his mum and her boyfriend have been locked in a blazing row. And now he knows the cops are here, it's threatening to boil over. <laughs> Phone. 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 Is there enough of you? Get your phone. I want the phone. Yeah. Get your phone. Yeah. You'll think you're our biggest one. Yeah. 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 As expected, the man isn't cooperating. Ah, I've got him. Yeah. But interceptors find strength in numbers, and the suspect is swiftly introduced to the cold, hard surface of the pavement. No, I want the phone. Is it going in back here? Who's a district one on? No, I want the phone. Text all you. To do me, yeah? Now get say, thank you. 
Three minutes. That pocket's clear, that back one's clear, I can't get to the side. They're all clear, I've got nothing on me. I want my phone. Now what is wrong with that? Why didn't you not sit up? The man's partner has his mobile. Yeah, I want my phone, mate. And for some reason, he really wants it back. So get off the sledge, right? Now get me my phone. Get off the bollocks and let me sit up, yeah? You've offered officers violence, you're not sitting up. Because of his aggression, cops detain the suspect while they get to the bottom of tonight's aggro. I know you want the phone of They started getting aggressive, put, clenching his fist, putting his fist up to my mum my nose and stuff like that. So that's when I rang police and they, they put it through as an emergency. You don't need to get me head down. I'm not I will carry on if you don't let me put my head up. Just, just, you let, me go back. Head up. just let me just put right. my head up. Right. 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 Meanwhile, Sophie's got a statement off the man's partner. We were just saying we've only detained him when we brought him out because he were kicking off. The Sophie says in a section that 39 assault. They'll just need locking him for it. Right, listen to me, pal. 139, you're under arrest. Section 39, common assault, all right? Right, okay, that's fine. But we'll sort that out when we get back to it, will we? He denies wrongdoing. But these are serious allegations, so he's off to the nick. It's a domestic violence incident. Um, there's been children in there, other adults. It's pretty important that we get here and we help our district colleagues um, and help victims of domestic violence. He was later found in possession of cocaine. He appeared in court charged with common assault and possession of a Class A drug. The assault charge was ultimately withdrawn and no further action was taken. Is fined £120 for possession of cocaine plus £115 in costs. Still to come, locked and loaded for a late night alarm call. This is the end, please! And I'll give you a clue. Bob! Benny Boy intercepts a hot date. You're driving like an idiot. If you'd have just driven off slowly, you wouldn't have got stopped. In West Yorkshire, armed defences have doubled in just four years. Oh, police! Firearms cops here are tasked with one mission. Got it. Get the guns off the streets. Turn around, turn around. Turn around. Your hands on your right. And bring those using them to justice. Keep your hands free to see them! Get to your knees. Sit down. We are seeing a big increase in, in, in the use of firearms at the moment, sort of criminally. There's been a particular flare-up in this area, in the Huddersfield area, between a couple of the gangs. We're obviously trying to, trying to get on top of these, but the big thing as well, the big thing tonight is we want to get these weapons back. Tonight, a team of firearms cops are mobilising for an intelligence-led operation. The plan is to raid two properties, looking for suspects thought to be connected to gun crime. Providing backup, dog handler Duncan Matthews. I've got police dog Tia with me tonight. She is a firearm support dog. Um, so when, when we get to the address, she goes in and makes sure it's safe for everybody else to go in afterwards. Duncan and Tia have taken part in dozens of armed raids, weeding out some of West Yorkshire's most dangerous criminals. About 30 seconds from the address, and so we've got to get to the address as quick as we can now to try and secure the suspect. The first suspect is wanted on suspicion of firing a weapon in public. Cops must tread carefully. Quiet. An intel suggests there could be multiple weapons in the house. Locked and loaded, the team prepare to make their move. Somebody up at 2 2. A silhouette in an upstairs window. He's waving to you. Speak to him. Can you go down to your front door? Yeah. He claims he's coming down, 
but they're taking no chances. This is where he's going to be put under control, just down in front of this vehicle here, just down there. Hands on your head, man. Hands on your head. Walk slowly towards me. Stand it back. Don't make any sudden movements. Keep walking. Right, stop there. Turn around. Face away from me. Go down to your knees. In the crosshairs of multiple automatic rifles, he's on his knees. Entry team confirmed. Subject is secure. And singing like a canary. It's just secure, Steve. Here, hopping with ice. He's a shotgun at top of the steps. An air rifle. And downstairs in the kitchen is a block 19 replica airsoft. He's amassed quite an arsenal. But before retrieving it, cops need to be sure none of his mates are hiding in the house. Do we have uh, any communication with them? And there's another problem. His girlfriend is still in the address. Um, his girlfriend's in there and there's three children in there as well. Officers are going to go to the front door, speak to her there, and basically negotiate her to come out with the children. We need them out of the house before we can search it properly then, make sure there's nobody else in there hiding. After 10 minutes, the suspect's partner finally appears, and she and the three young kids are safely away. Oh, police! Anybody in the address? Make yourself known now! Police to the dog! Get yourself! <laughs> Tia rushes in where armed men fear to tread. Right, she's gone back along the landing. I can see a shadow moving around on that. Come! Dog safe, no indication. It's gone well. Tia's gone in. She's done what she needed to do. I'm fairly happy there's nobody else in now. Just made it that little bit safer for the firearms team to go in now. I'll be the house. I'll police. Show <laughs> yourself now, please. Open door straight ahead. Floor by floor, room by room, armed cops scour the family home. Right, clear. Room cleared out. Entry team to bronze. We're proceeding upstairs. They soon locate the imitation shotgun and air rifle the man told them about. Plus, something iffy in the attic that he conveniently failed to mention. Certainly with places like this, they've got cannabis groves in there, they're looking at protecting them, whether that's why he's got that um, imitation weapon or not, I don't know. Had he come to the window or the door holding that, um, looking how real it is, I think it would have ended very differently to how it just has done now. The house will be placed on lockdown before being turned over the next day by specialist search teams. But for Duncan, Tia and the firearms unit, the night isn't over yet. Extra Delta 6 a briefing received, no questions. Their next suspect has served time for GBH and now he's wanted on suspicion of attempted murder. The intelligence that we have on this suspect is that he's potentially a lot higher threat than the previous one. Obviously, we deal with each threat on an individual basis. With the stakes high, there's no time to hang about. Help, police! Help, police! Come to the door! Do it now! If no one answers, they'll have to force entry. Still no response. Two lights on. Someone's finally got the message. Show yourself! Several loaded guns are trained on the front door. Not the armed bad guy they were expecting. Who else is in? In the house? Yes. Yeah. It's the suspect's mum. Apparently, her son isn't home, but he's due back any minute. It's not ideal because at the moment he's not under our control. Well, we don't know whether he's got the weapon, so this is what we're just going to have to sort out now. Make sure as soon as he gets here, we've got control of him and he can't change his mind and go somewhere else. Hold on, Macy, hold on. Engine off, on the car, please. Let me see hands, Chief, when you get out. Keep your hands up for him, buddy. Come out to some sick car. He's happy to cooperate, but this man is known to have a violent past. Please, what's the one, Sam? 
Down to your knees. Keep your hands where I can see. Keep your hands where I can see him. All this necessary. Yeah, just He's unarmed, and the car's clean too. So where's the gun? Oh, police! Anybody in the address? Make yourself down. A quick search, and still no weapon. But with two wanted men off the streets, Dunk's satisfied with a job well done. We've got both suspects in custody. We, we've come out, we've done what we wanted to in the end. Um, that, that was the ultimate aim. Um, the ideal thing would be if we can find the weapon now that's been used. Um, but ultimately, we want to get the person in custody, but we've got to do it safely. Yeah, that's happened tonight, um, and everyone's, everyone's safe. So, yeah, we're happy with that. No action was taken against the first suspect with regards to firing a weapon in public. He is, however, still under investigation for production of cannabis. The second suspect was released without charge. It's a quiet summer's evening, so interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom can't miss the sound of a hot hatch begging to get pulled. Let's have a look at this Golf here. A white Golf GTI has burned it from the lights, leaving the Friday night traffic for dust. But Ben's no slouch from the lights and on it in seconds. Just the attitude that people have got, it's nine o'clock at night, Lights have just gone to green, and lad in front thinks it's uh, Grand Prix at Silverstone. Petrolhead Benny Boy is a big fan of high-performance motors, but has little time for low-performance drivers. And thinks he can just give it beans, and everyone's got to accept that he can drive how he wants and do what he wants. So we'll just have a quick word with him. Very, very good stop. Oh, he just don't know we're here. Driver's got a heavy right foot, but it doesn't look like he's trying to get away. It looks likely he's no idea there's a cop on his tail. You seen you. Ben will soon take care of that. Turn it off. Finally, the pennies dropped. What's your car keys? To your car? Like... No. Right. Jump out. Both the driver and his female passenger are dressed to impress, but it'll take more than a dicky bow to impress Benny Boy. <laughs> Do lad. You can't. So first of all, calm yourself down. Hi, guys. Who's his car? You talk to me. Yeah. Oh, uh, has hired off someone. I have who? 007 says the GTI is hired from that well-known rental firm, a friend of a friend. Right, so how much did you hide it for? £150. For the night? Yeah, we'll yeah, just for the Whoa, £150 for a night. It's a nice car. It's a nice car, yeah. And how are you insured? Insured? Yeah. He told me it's temporary insurance. I have no idea. Surprise, surprise, there's no paperwork to back up his claims. How old are you? 18. 18! Wow! 18 driving a Golf GTI! Benny boys heard enough. Right, listen, listen. You're driving like an idiot. OK. Speed kills. Yeah, he does. Right, so what did you do at the bottom of Barker and Road? I'll give you a clue. Bop, bop. So what do you do then? Do you want me to give you another clue? Bop. What do you do when you turn down bottom of Leeds Road? Bop. Then what do you do when you turn up back at Telegraph and Argus? Not acceptable. And these you know, them, them two people who are walking up here, when they drive like an idiot, doing 40. Yeah? It's a higher car, apparently. That's not a higher car. Oh, dear. Oh, me with higher. The dodgy hire is an all too familiar story for the interceptors. This is what we have all the time. Right. And people like you, no disrespect, naive, do what someone tells them to do or says, yeah, take it. I believe I'm insured. You're not. Have you got any proof of any insurance? Um, not on you. No. No. Oh, dear. How long have you been driving for? 
Uh, I've been passed for nearly a year now. Do you know when you in your first two years of driving, what happens if you get more than six points? You get your license revoked. Yeah. So you have to pass your test again. Do you return to a, a prisoner license holder? Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately for this lad, having no insurance will earn him the full half dozen, so it's bye-bye licence. Do you know what the biggest Sorry. kick in the teeth is? If he'd have just driven off slowly, you wouldn't have got stopped. I didn't even see you. I know. Do you know why that is? Lack of experience. The golf is getting seized. How do you feel with his driving? Don't like idiot. And to make matters worse, this was no ordinary date. You know what it is? It's this day. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. Right, what's going on? Is it a dance? It's like a... Have you finished school, haven't we? Is it a prom? Yeah, it's like a prom. The young couple have just arrived at the hotel for their high school prom. Signature on that bit there. Give him a Where? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hold it? Lovely, thank you. I haven't got a signature. It's like a... You'll get one when you get older. <laughs> Not only is the lad losing his licence, he's missing the biggest social event of the year and now every school kid's nightmare. Hello. Hello. Are you teachers? Yeah. What's your... Oh, no teachers are here. Double trouble. There you go. Time to face the music. If yeah. there's trouble inside, I'm telling you now, I'll make your life misery. Nothing's going to happen inside. So just, I can't send. just make sure. Right. OK? Cinderella shall go to the ball after all. Prince Charming was reported for no insurance, and because he could potentially receive six points, he may well lose his licence. Uh, I don't want to ruin his prom, but it has done. But he should have thought about that before he set off like an idiot from traffic lights. Oh, yeah. Was it result for shots, please? <laughs> Coming up. We're lost. Nature calls for Chris and Aidy. If I stand in dog turd, I will not be happy. Interceptors Chris Basto and A.D. Fickling have just kicked off the night shift and are already painting the town blue, hunting a wanted motor. There were a vehicle that made off from uh, a couple of lads over there, Suzuki Ignis, made off twice, and, and uh, it's been sighted again by district officers, Castleford area, so we're just making his way down into that area now, and hopefully it'll pop out again. The runaway is well known to the cops, but he's a slippery customer. Houdini in a Suzuki. He failed to stop for me yesterday as well, so yeah, it's personal. It would be. But you can't personalise it. It's not personal. It's not personal. But it would be very nice to get him because they failed to stop for Chris on our team as well a couple of days ago. Just give it the street where it was seen last. Eyes right, fellas. It's that. That's, that's it. it. Now Chris has him on the hook and this time refuses to let him wriggle free. Yeah, 6 1, uh, we're behind the Suzuki Ignis uh, vehicle failing to stop. Having been given the slip once on these roads, Chris reckons he knows Houdini's MO. He should go to Fryston Woods, we need somebody to Fryston Woods a bit. Somebody get to Fryston Woods ASAP, please. To lose a Suzuki once could be regarded as a misfortune. It's left, left, left onto Kendall Drive. To lose it twice, would be carelessness. Stand by, we're still on the green, just hold on, it's going off-road, it's going off-road at the green, Go into the left. woods. The boys' Beamer 3 Series is no off-roader, but interceptors don't give up that easy. The thing is, he could just leave it parked in the woods. we go for a walk and see how far it is. I'm happy to run till I puke to get these. <laughs> If we find this car down here, I'll be chuffed. Occasionally, a walk in the woods can help focus the mind. Oh, it's quite it open, it isn't it? It turns left, because you could see it turn left. For some good old-fashioned detective work. There's, like, reflective lights on the floor. Yeah, I've seen that, as if they've been done on purpose. Yeah. It's been skidding as well, look at that. It's been skidding like mad. The signs are promising. How are we going to get out of here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not bothered about walking a few miles, though. But the one that got away, they'll go the extra mile. Thing is, right, we've got to find a way back to the car. In full Blair Witch territory. Oh, don't go too far here, dear cat's ill. I might get scared. There's wolves around here. 15 minutes later, they spot something, and it's not Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, reflector up there. Yeah, it's there, look. Found it. Get in. 
Awesome. Bingo! The driver's ditched the Suzuki and disappeared, and he's taken the keys with him. The problem is, we're in Midland Woods. We'll get it out, mate. I've got a trick up my sleeve. Before joining the force, motorbike fanatic and advanced driver AD was a hotshot mechanic. If you want a motor gone in 60 seconds, AD's your man. We're just going to have to put our trust in AD, who's going to drive us back to our car. So that might be a bit dicey. But yeah, very, very happy. So it turned out to be a good little job. But they're not out of the woods just yet. Um, oh, he's doing it. That motor snacker, didn't it? Got... Oh, mate, that nearly did it. I, know, I got really excited. I thought we've done it, and then. Well, I just. I like to. You're teasing the suspense of getting it achieved, and then just let you down gently, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Story of my life. An A for effort, AD, but you're no Vin Diesel. 6 1, uh, we can't get it started this car, so we're not going to be able to get it out. If we can organise recovery with a 4x4, because that's the only vehicle that's going to be accessible into these woods. The recovery van will be an hour. A long time to sit in the cold, dark woods, twiddling your thumbs. There's no way this car's going to go anywhere now. So we can walk back to the car, wait for it recovery, we can jump it 4x4 and show him how to get here, car. Yeah, yeah. It's not the result we wanted, but we've got car. The main thing is we've got car. Exactly. I'm happy with that. And we're going to remember which way we're going, here. Yeah, we'll remember it. Yeah, we, should have some, we should have a ball of string, shouldn't we? <laughs> it's easy, Hansel. Just follow the trail of tyre tracks. They're going to come in the morning and... Uh, exactly. The little car's not going to be there, Have his key in hand. And always stick to the path. Straight down there, or did we come round? Or we came round that way, didn't we? I'm not sure. Lads? We're lost. It didn't come through there, it's too tight, didn't it? come through there. I wonder if it's come this way. Right, I'll just go see if there's any marks up here. Hold on. In fact, it is... Oh, Christ. I think that fork down there, we should have gone right. I don't remember seeing that. I have no idea, Eddie. Well, let's just wing it. This is turning out to be a shambles. Don't come out that one. This is not fun now. <laughs> I think it gets light about half four in the morning. By that time, we should be able to find his way out woods. If I stand in dog turd, I will not be happy. We are walking the right way. Are we really? After an hour's rambling... I have no idea I've managed to cock that up so badly. ..they find the path to freedom. What's worrying, though, is the car's that far away. Have we over overdone it by that much? <laughs> <laughs> well, we shot it by about a kilometre, haven't we? <laughs> it's taken them so long to get out, the recovery van's already arrived. Super, you just timed it right. Which means they've got to turn around and head straight back into the woods. <laughs> this is a funny shift. It's just like being at Serengeti, isn't it? <laughs> All we need now is David Attenborough narrating this. To the left, you can see the lions. <laughs> There it is, it's a funny look. Hey! Wasn't that far away, was it? Since the car won't start, they've got to drag it out. We'll give it a try. We aren't bothered about any damage on there. If it rips now, I'll send it off because it gets stuck, we'll just torch it and leave it. Well, we won't torch it, we'll just leave it. We won't torch it. <laughs> right, this is going to be the ride of our lives. <laughs> this time, they've got fresh tyre marks to follow. So far, so good. Finding their way out should be a breeze. It is. is this where we should have turned right? I don't know, because I didn't see it. I was too busy talking, but I don't remember this bit. Oh, bugger me. Lost again, and AD knows who's to blame. Here comes, I think he'll still be looking for him, but he has an off um, smell at the moment. A wise man once said, it's not the destination, but the journey that counts. <laughs> he clearly never travelled with AD and Chris. There's one, look, there's one. Oh, yes. Yes, get in there. Several hours after they first spotted the Suzuki, it's finally on its way to the pound. <laughs> Don't mess with us, Chris, eh? Cos we'll drag your car out of anywhere. Probably one of the funniest shifts I've had in a long time, yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Romeo 6-1. 6-1, we've finally got this motor out of woods. We're alive and well, and we're going to go get something to eat. Happy days. On Monday at 9, Chris Tarrant takes the last train to Transylvania in search of the truth behind the story of Dracula in new extreme railway journeys. Dan Snow's edging ever closer to the truth next as a CT scan of Tutankhamun's skeleton reveals violent secrets new after the break. He stood at the gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to stab police. Crime is on the rise. Armed with a axe and a machete. Trying to break into two separate houses. But come at the hour. My unit, my unit. Come at the interceptors. Get on the floor! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's elite. What's on? <laughs> Alongside their pursuit drivers. Contact, contact, stand by. On target with their firearms unit. In the air with their eye in the sky. Off and running, off and running. This is the front line in the fight against crime. Get on the floor! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! This is police interceptors. It's just another day in paradise. Coming up. Got vehicle fail at the stop. The Stinkings do their thing. To bring down a dangerous driver. Get out! Get out! Get out! There's someone suspect at the tip, and it's not stick at the dump. And a little out. He's just chucked some attack at window. Has he? Gets more than he bargained for. Right. Saw you dump the items out the window. Okay. Behind the wheel of an unmarked beamer tonight, interceptor Richard Jaffa Whiteley, who's passing on pearls of police wisdom to rookie John Eatry. Somebody who I used to work with a long time ago always used to say, the more you put in, the more you get out. If something pops up in front of you that you don't like the look of, boom, you pop up. Joys of an unmarked car, right place, right time, and the more you stop, the more you get out. TPAC trained advanced driver, Queen fan Jaffers, been putting criminals under pressure for 18 years. And another one's about to bite the dust because Jaffers' sixth sense is tingly. A yellow Audi speeding through the streets in the early hours with no lights on is begging to be pulled over. The car's brand new, so perhaps the driver hasn't got a handle on its controls. Insured to cockshot drive leads. The interceptor's covert car means the Audi driver doesn't have a clue he's being tailed. Yet. Jaffa thinks it's dodgy, so he hits the blues and the driver hits the gas. Yeah, what off. The driver may not have found the lights, but he does know where the throttle is. 571 urgent, got vehicle fail at the stop, cockshot lane, going to interrupt. Requesting TPAC authority. Interceptors need to get this car stopped. Yeah, no lights and swerving all over the road on uh, Rainville Road. Approaching red traffic lights. Barreling through red lights. Left, left towards Stanley Road. He tries to shake off the cops. Yeah, it's speed 70 miles an hour. Uh, wrong side of carriageway. Still lights out, the Audi careers the wrong way down the main road. But this is Jaffa's patch and quickly plots a course to intercept. X-ray Romeo 6 1 and behind it again now, right side of the carriageway towards Mike's carpets. The dangerous Audi driver ups the ante, hammering through another red 
he's a whisker away from wiping out a white van. Oh, wait. Jaffa lets a high-vis marked unit become lead car. As they try to pass, the Audi gives them a dig. Make sure you've got your 6 2 we make contact, set the mic. With a cop on his right, the runaway hangs a left into the back streets. Good white male occupant, shaved head, tattoo on the right side of his neck, and it's right, right, right. Is it still right, Sam? Get ready to go. Yep. The cops are set for a decamp, so draft in a little help from on high. Yes, yes, we are on route. The police chopper is in the air and cruising at 130 knots. It'll be above the action in a matter of minutes. In the meantime, the Audi's got an interceptor on its bumper. It's right, right, right. Who won't be thrown off by riding the brakes. These brake checkers. Or booting the accelerator. We're still in gear over 30. So he tries the scenic route. This is going off road, it's going to be camping. Left, 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 put the road. 6 2 is there, back on put the road. Then it's right, right, right onto Faro Bank towards Heights Drive, Heights Drive. Just in time. Head off through us now, so we're uh, just coming over ahead now. The helicopter enters the fray. We are backing off, we've got it. He's swerving all over the road. We are backing off. With the Audi in the chopper's crosshairs, interceptors on the ground can back off. This one's going nowhere. Fast, uh, uh, wrong side. Once again, the wrong uns on the wrong side of the road. So it's uh, roundabout, uh, wrong side roundabout, and he's taken the second. Whilst he's got four wheels, it's clear this driver isn't going to stop. But this pursuit has a sting in its tail. It's going to hold you, I think. A swarm of interceptors Got vehicle fail at the stop. is homing in on a reckless driver. Yeah, no lights and swerving all over the road. Who pushed his luck a wrong side of carriageway and point blank refused to stop. Make sure you've got six to make contact. But if you stir the interceptor's nest, the wrong side roundabout, you're going to get stung. Yeah, we've got helicopter and units now, we just need to try and get to. Uh, and fed in the direction that we're uh, the sting aside. Guys, they were way down at my head upstream and they're taking my passenger out. Determined to put a stop to this pursuit, the interceptors are laying down a gauntlet of three stingers. It's coming to order, I think. Stinger one is in place. Vehicle still continuing uh, blocks as well. The first sting is textbook. Just seconds later, Stinger 2 misses by inches. Now the damage is already done. It's definitely got a rear offside blowout. One tyre is in tatters. Smell it, can't you? But the three wheeler ploughs on. Straight through red, straight through red. He's struggling now, he's uh, speed reducing, it's about zero. It's about to reduce some more. Stinger 3 bites. Six two, vehicle still up in. I think it's got all four out now. Even with four tyres of their brand new Audi shredded, the driver carries on carving up the streets. If we uh, did a movement up on him very shortly, speed is reduced to uh, six zero. There's no choice but to put the brakes on for him with a T pack. We've got three boxing units behind it. Six to one, man, and if we can move forward, if we go through this junction. 
He's wrapped up and boxed in. There's nowhere left to go. That pass through one there, vehicle stopped. Get out! Get out! Officers now trying to get the driver out. Get down, towards me! Give me the man now! The officers soon discover the driver is disabled, with broken bones from a previous injury, and this Audi is his rented mobility car, meant to be used by a friend to help with his transport. But I, I can't walk, bro. I've got broken back, broken pelvis, two broken feet and broken legs. And what are you doing? I have honestly got driving like that. I, I, cause I, I'm please scared of getting. Last you. time, last time, police got me here yeah, for no reason. I, honestly, and it's all nothing. No Why didn't you stop for me then? The drivers caused serious damage to the oh, leased please, mobility car, worth at least twenty grand. Is this your wheelchair in back? Yeah, it's you. Yeah, it is you. Yeah. Let me know. Nearly got away, though, innit? After an epic 15-minute pursuit involving five cop cars, three stingers, the chopper and the T-Pack, he's lucky no one's been seriously hurt. The biggest casualty is a formerly tasty motor. I'm not going to give you any more problems, I promise right. you. How did you get like, into this car? It's easy. How did you get I'm into not, the I car? I can shuffle about. Right. And like, so yeah. Shuffle into one of our cars then. Before the trip to the Nick, Jaffa's got some home truths for the driver. All I would say is, though, you could have stopped at any point. You could have killed someone. When I lit you up on Rainville Road, you could have just stopped. No lights on, swerving all over the road. Um, asked him to stop, and uh, off we went on a merry dance around Leeds. Driving dangerously and putting people at risk. When he could have just stopped and been advised about his lights, that was his choice. Nobody else has made that choice. It turns out the driver had already been disqualified from driving. He was convicted of dangerous driving, driving whilst disqualified, and driving without insurance, and sentenced to 18 months in prison, as well as being banned from the roads for four years. Oh, yeah. A little Jaffa kiss. Yeah, well. Could have been worse. Metal recycling is a £7 billion business in the UK. Whilst one man's trash is sometimes another man's treasure, rubbish dumps are often targeted by criminals who steal items like scrap metal to sell on. 6-5 morning, uh, I'm on route to this intruders, if you've got an update, please. Dog handler Steve Huntington is making his way over to Halifax, where local bobbies have got eyes on three suspects raiding a tip. Even though it, what you and I may class as junk, it might be valuable to uh, other people. So it's quite common they'll break in to steal scrap or recyclable stuff. Cops on scene are keeping the area contained until Steve and his dog Macy arrive, in case the suspects do a runner. Still definitely there. Um, I'm currently watching him from about 10 feet away, picking scrap metal out of a bin. What we don't want is me getting Macy out and the suspect seeing or hearing us um, and then away on his toes before we can even gain entry. Yorkshire born and bred, Steve's been taking down troublemakers for over 20 years. He spent the last two teamed up with canine interceptor Macy and they love nothing more than a game of hunt the suspect. Hello. Oh, yeah, you're right. For the scene, local cops update Steve. He's there. Can you see that from the scrap metal? Where the scrap metal sign is. Scrap metal sign. Yeah. The red skip that's attached to it. Isn't that skip? You see, as I keep bobbing up. Where's it? You're still on here. Where's it over to? Behind a warrior. Hide and seek in a scrapyard could be one for Macy. Quiet. Stay. One of the most commonly used breeds for police dogs. Quiet. Is the Malinois. Quiet. Macy's only three years old but she's a Malinois of many talents. Quiet. Stealth is key tonight. Quiet. And Macy is as quiet as a mouse. Quiet. Clearing, clanging about. Need to get in. 
key holders are on the way. But for now, the site is padlocked. So they're just totally oblivious that we're even here. Interceptors need to get in before the suspects skip out. Steve thinks they squeezed in through a gap under the fence. I can't send her in without me being able to get in. I'm just considering whether I can get under there. Perhaps not, Steve. At the front gate, firearms cops have arrived with a bolt cutter, as well as a new tool in their armory, a drone. One of West Yorkshire Police's 60 licensed drone pilots sends the quadcopter up. And suddenly, on the other side of the compound, the suspect has made a run for it. But gives himself up at the gates. Watch him. Steve and Macy have got some questions. Where's your mates? Where's your mates? Huh? There's nobody there. They'll end up getting bit if they are. The suspected skip raider claims his mates have already bailed out, and he seems to have left empty-handed. Have you got anything on your election No. A search reveals a first for the cops. Skip man's brought his own handcuffs. Got a set of cuffs on him? Yeah, he's, got, he's like he's going to arrest himself. <laughs> set, set, set himself up to fail there, didn't he? This is the first time for arresting. <laughs> Steve and Macy need to check there's no more intruders hiding in the recycling yard. Dog. Police with a dog. Anyone in here show yourself now and the dog? Coming, ready or not. Go find. They search high Get on. and low. Good girl. Get on. But any accomplices have done one. I've had a good look round. Um, he's saying he's on his own, then he was saying there was somebody here before. But we've got one. Probably done as much as we can now. Um, she needs she needs a rest and a drink, so I'm gonna stick it away. When questioned, Skip Man claimed he was just looking at the skips and had no intention of stealing anything. No action was taken against him. Your average interceptor is a marvel of biological evolution. Quick! Sprinter's legs. Down the Copper's nose. We just picked it up. A really strong smell of cannabis. Car stinks of cannabis. And eagle eyes. It's gone straight up. Yeah. Which have just spotted a suspicious Seat ducking into a side street without indicating. It may go this. And eagle eyed Gav has clocked something else. He's just chucked some attack at the window. Has he? Yeah. At best, the passenger is a little out, but more likely he's lobbed something iffy out of the window at first sight of a cop. Are they leaving you with him while I just go have a look? Oh, we're doing, bud? Not bad. Your car? No. Whose car is it? I've borrowed it off my mate. Are you insured? Am I? Yeah. To be honest, mate, I'm not going to lie, no, I'm not. Turn it off, then. Leaving PC Drury to do the honours for no insurance. Right, have you got your licence with you? I am. Uh, you aren't? Right. Gab's off to do a spot of litter picking. They dumped some attack at the window, the passenger. Gab's an ex-army, Arnie-loving Predator fan. And when he hunts down whatever the passenger threw out of the window, he'll be back. It doesn't take long to home in on some evidence, but it's not what Gav expected. There it is, whatever that is. That's sunglasses, isn't it? Gucci sunglasses? Why would you lob Gucci sunglasses out? It's a strange thing to lob out a window, isn't it? Designer shades may not be necessary. What have they just been up to? But it is a beautiful evening. Can't see out else, can you? No, it's a strange one. You know what they say, red sky at night. And voila, drugs. Copper's delight. <laughs> I know I did. I know I saw something. The lad we've got stops, ditched a load of drugs, so just keep an eye on them in the background. Is anybody nearby? It seems in his hurry, the passenger ditched two glasses cases, one full of glasses, 
and the other full of white powder. And the future isn't looking bright for the driver either. So it's not your car and you're not insured on it? Does your mate know you've got it? I don't know. Do so you tell him your mate doesn't know you've got your car either? Right, OK. Oh dear. Can I just ask you just one question? Will I be getting... I don't have a licence. And um, obviously I'm not insured, but I'm not banned, I'm not disqualified. But, but you don't have a, a licence? No, but I'd, I'd rather not get arrested with my dog. The driver's less concerned about his charges than about his dog. Yes, I can... And as Gav returns to the scene... Listen, we'll get to the bottom of it and we'll see what's going to happen. Oh, look at him! Quick nod to this handsome devil. He's awesome, isn't he? And the passenger's nicked. Right, come here, here's your hands, here's your hands. Here's your hands. All right. Okay. All right. Saw so you dump the items out of the window. Uh, okay. Saw so you dump them out of the window. Eh? All right. So you're going to be detained for a drug search and you're also under arrest eh? on suspicion of, of possession with intent to supply Class A substance. Eh? Get bracelets on him. Right. You're going to have to come out there. The driver's also nicked. Because of what's been thrown out of the car, right, you're under arrest for. Right, so. Listen, you're under arrest for possession with intent to supply. Yeah. All right. With Class A Gucci locked up. Gav gets a closer look at the package retrieved from the street. Looks like I'm cut oh, and crack cocaine. Then it's down to business with the driver. Right, car's going to get seized, all right? Um, you get locked up for your driving offences, drugs offences, and probably taken without owner's consent, if not theft of motor vehicle. All right. There's just the matter of the cutie riding shotgun. I just want you to jump out at car with him. Yeah, I'll, I'll, well... You all right standing up? Just watch my balance. I'll watch your balance as you get that, Cocker. It's raining cats and dogs as they ferry the precious pooch to the boot of the beamer. Dog around here. Chuck her on there, and then she's, then she's happy, you know, just to sit there. It's all right, mate. She's absolutely gorgeous, that dog. Hey. He's gorgeous, isn't he? With gorgeous, safe and sound. Sound in. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Come on. I know, I know. The driver's locked up and the working dogs leap into action. It's not long before they find something. And it's not Gorgeous's bony stash. Cannabis. The dogs have sniffed out cannabis. And cash. A fair bit of money, which goes hand in hand with drug dealing. And then um, we've got cannabis as well, which is, um, it looks like they've been using, has been driving around. Right, buddy. OK, there's cannabis in your car as well, so you're under arrest on suspicion of uh, possession of a Class B substance. All right. Um, because of the items in your car, I'm going to be asking for a saliva swab. All right, from your mouth. All right. Um, so if you lean forward and uh, stick your tongue out, stick your tongue out. And I'll do the rest, OK? Stick your tongue out. Look it out. Let's take eight minutes to come back. Which is long enough for the driver's sister to arrive. Are you after a dog? Let's see you, love you. Come and grab him. You got a lead? Hey, missus. And for Gav to hand over his pedigree chum. Come here. Oh, I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. I got him, I got him. Got him. There you go, love. What's he being locked up for? I can't tell you. Because that would take all night. His charge sheet is as long as your arm, and getting longer. All right, three minutes past ten, you're under arrest on suspicion of driving whilst over the specified drug limit as well, OK? All right. It's a full house. In vehicle, it's a bit of a treasure trove. Um, passenger is the one who dumped the stuff out the window. He's got all the phones on him. Cash under, wind, under sun visor. Little bits of cannabis are dotted all the way around. Um, drivers, no licence, no insurance. He's tested positive for cannabis. And he's admitted that he shouldn't have that car. It's a decent job. It's a really decent job. I'm really happy with it. No further action was taken against the dog, but the driver was arrested for drug driving, theft of a motor vehicle, driving without a licence or insurance, possession with intent to supply Class A drugs and possession of Class B drugs. Gucci, the little out, was arrested for theft of a motor vehicle, possession of Class Bs and with intent to supply Class As. But more importantly... The dog was awesome. That dog was awesome, I just felt sorry for it being stuck around these two. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous, dog, that. I'm just opening it up and weed on my coat. Coming up, 
We're in. This is it, mate. Yeah, see you. Right. See you. In Wildest Wakefield, Gav's on a Yeti hunt. Let's chuck in some attack, car. Yeah. And... See my mobile here? Yeah. Aidy's top tips to using mobile phones in cars. When I want to put it away, I go somewhat like this. I don't come out and go like this. Like this. Last year in England and Wales, highly trained officers carried out at least 13,000 pursuits, chasing down runaways who'd risk it all to give them the slip. At the end of the day, we want to catch the bad guys, uh, and I don't think there's anybody in this job that, that won't think like that, you want to catch the bad guys. However, our main priority is not to put any members of public at, at danger, or the person behind that wheel. So. We might lose a car because of the risks that driver is taking. But if somebody makes off from the police, it's usually not the first time and it usually won't be the last time. So they will they will come again. A recent theft in Doncaster saw a man working on his allotment threatened by a thug who stole his car, a black Skoda Yeti. Tonight, the cars crept onto the interceptor's patch. We've just had um, a confirmed sighting, a reliable sighting of a, a stolen vehicle um, down in South Kirby area. So we're just going to try and get down there and have a look. The good thing is today is we're in a, a plain car, which should give us somewhat of an element of surprise, especially if we can sit off and monitor it. On the Yeti hunt are Gav Pearson and Ray Terry. We're just going to do a bit of a trawl around these streets and just see if, it, see if we can drop on it. Gav's behind the wheel of his favourite patrol car, the unmarked 330 Beamer. He'll need to use stealth and all his driving skills to capture the elusive Yeti. It could be anywhere down here now. Oh, it's not coming. There's been a sighting. How far we're behind it, what's time on it? Literally a second to go. The Skoda Yeti is close by. We'll see him, we'll see if he's seen a black car. See him. Have you seen a black car come through here, mate? Oh, Nothing in front of you, right. No problem. Right, choices are, Ray, we'll go into this estate here or we'll go straight through. So I reckon we'll go back and go Kirby Green and just down that way, because I don't think it's it this way. Following his instinct, Gav spins around. Ooh, hang on. This might be it. This is it. It's in front. We're in. This is it, mate. Yeah, it's here. So, uh, it's here. Yeah. They've spotted the Yeti crawling through the streets. X-ray Romeo 64, we've got that stolen. Uh, we're behind it, Minsthorpe Lane. X-ray Romeo 64. Um, if you can get other units, it's not aware of an plane. Negative, we're in a plane car, it's uh, not aware of our position. Gav and Ray don't want to spook the driver, so they hang back until the cavalry arrives. It's slow for cameras. It's weaving around a bit. Something's not right. Pulling over, what's well, indicating? It's Romeo 52. It's going. The drivers clock them. I think it's going, mate. And boots it. Want to wear uh, and away. Vehicle's not fair to stop. Turning speed cameras into a light show. 80, 80. No lane, speed is 80. And overtakes at full throttle. This dangerous driver is willing to take big risks to get away. Six bucks, it's gone through a red light. Tearing round a blind bend on the wrong side of the road. We're out towards South Yorkshire now, mate. The Yeti's heading for the hills, and its driver seems to know their way around the country lanes. So Gav keeps his big foot down. It's going towards Great Alton. There are signs the driver may have had a drink. It's chucking some attack of car. Beer. Like a beer can lobbed in Gav's path. The reckless runaway triples the speed limit as he enters a residential area. 90 miles an hour. No traffic on the road, still sitting. 
Gav and Ray need to stop the driver and reclaim the stolen Yeti. The top priority for the interceptors is everyone's safety. Right, 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 mate. It's going towards that back, that back of Honda. However, safety is the Yeti driver's last concern as he hammers round corners in his bid to escape. Where's it gone? It's got to have gone left. It's got to have gone left, mate. That's there. They catch a fleeting glimpse of the disappearing Yeti. Somebody local and all these roads. Yeah. Left or right, left or right. Left. It's vanished. It's got to have turned off somewhere. I bet it's gone down there. It's got to have gone down Mill, mill Lane, mate. Yes, yes, it's a temporary loss. Ah, frustrating. Yeah. It's gone down here, I think. I think it's some uh, wheel marks. Had that little bit of time on us, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. I'll say he knows the area. Yeah. It leads me to believe it's going to be dumped somewhere. There, oh. I knew we'd have it. I know it won't be far. Just minutes after they lost sight, Gavin Ray have tracked down the stolen Yeti. Right, keys are with it. At least it's nice, got somebody's house keys back as well. Romeo 64, uh, the vehicle has been abandoned with the keys. At least we've got the car. Just got enough time to do a right and a left on us. And that's the way it is gone. It's all crushed. You can see it's all crushed. Through that way. Gav searches nearby gardens for the driver. He's got to have gone out that way somewhere, through this way. But they're long gone. There should be enough forensic evidence in, in car, so fingers crossed we'll be able to get him. It's the way it works sometimes. You win some, you lose some, but I think inevitable. I think the, the end result is good. We've got the car back. Yeah, no suspects, but we've got lines of inquiry to do. The Yeti was recovered by the police. Despite forensic testing inside the car, the driver has not yet been identified. We love our coffee. Well, Johnny loves his tea. Well, some Yorkshire, isn't it? Probably. I love my tea, but not. But I prefer coffee. But it won two world wars on coffee, didn't they? No. Looking to charge up their night shift in Leeds. Interceptors John Firth and A.D. Fickling are swinging by a petrol station for a cuppa. So you look at that one that's just pulling out there and he's on his mobile to see it. Straight out on mobile. The brew will have to wait. Last year in West Yorkshire, over 1,500 people were caught using their mobile phone behind the wheel. Even holding your phone whilst driving is illegal. He comes straight out of the garage, first thing he did with that, and he knows. But he's not very observant because we were sat right in the garage for court. We're going to have a sitting back of our car. Unfortunately, that is going to cost him 300 quid and six points. That's called unlucky. How are we doing all right? Yeah, yeah. Do you know why we stopped you? Yeah, because I was putting my mobile in hand. Yes. Why are we doing that? We're just putting the wheel, we still Not convinced, are you, AD? Hang on a minute, you see my mobile here? Yeah. When I want to put it away, I go somewhat like this. I don't go, I don't come out and go like this. Like this. Don't talk rubbish. No, no, but... The driver cuts to the chase. He's out delivering pizzas and has hungry customers waiting. Can I answer this phone? Just tell them I'm with the officer. Well, you're not driving now, so you can answer it if you want. Yeah, I'm just on news with you, because of you, you keep ringing me. They're just giving me a ticket now with the officers. Just give me five minutes now, bro, eh? honestly. You just put me in shit. Sorry. Customers dealt with. Aid is back to business. How many points have you got in your licence, do you know? Nothing. Clean licence? Clean licence. Whereabouts is your driving licence? Maybe it's a home officer. I'm not really sure because I've got another car as well, so maybe it's in that. Where will it be if it's in car? Dashboard.
The license checks out, but it isn't the driver's lucky day. There's a strong smell in his motor, and it's not pepperoni. There's a bit of a smell of cannabis in your car. Is there? Okay. Friend being smoking. Right. Because of that, I'm going to require you to provide a roadside screening device on a drugs wipe test. Is that okay? A drugs wipe is a simple saliva test which takes just eight minutes to detect if someone's taking cannabis or cocaine. AD plans to make good use of that waiting time. Because my colleague says there's a smell of cannabis in your vehicle. The one bag of cannabis in there. Yeah. Is there a bag of cannabis in there at the moment? Whereabouts? Just put it there. You don't have to guess. Okay. Well, we'll go have a look. Straight talking AD's got over 20 years' experience in sussing out suspects. His hidden talents are juggling and walking on his hands. And you can add fortune telling to that list. A strong smell of cannabis from in here. But he's offered that up very easily for me. He's basically said, yeah, there's a bag on centre console. Which then makes me suspicious because I think to myself, he wants me to find that bag because then he thinks I'm going to stop looking around the rest of the car. Well, unfortunately, he's wrong. And it also makes me think that there's other stuff in the car. So we'll have a good search. And surprise, surprise. He's now going to find himself under arrest very, very shortly because uh, we have two small bags of white powder in here, which I suspect is cocaine. You never know what you're going to be facing when you're dealing with somebody. So it's just been a routine check for a mobile phone, which is now going to result in a prisoner possession of a Class A and Class B drug. AD fills John in. Johnny, they were just hidden underneath in bottom. They were just sort of like two bags of coke. One of looks like cannabis. cocaine. That it one feels solid, so it feels more like crack. Crack. Well, so they've got your cannabis there. Some good news as his drug wipe was negative, but now it's time for the bad. We've found some Class A drugs in your car. There's some cocaine and cannabis. So at this moment in time, you're under arrest on suspicion of possession of Class A. All right. Customers will be going hungry as the pizza man is about to be delivered to custody. The driver will think twice about using his phone at the wheel as he could receive six points and a £200 fine. To top it off, Pizza Guy got a community resolution order and was referred to a drug support group for possession of cocaine and cannabis, all thanks to Mystic AD. This is offered up the cannabis as a bit of a gift. I'll tell them I've got it, they'll find it, and that'll be the end of it. But unfortunately for him, we don't give up that easy, do we? Still to come. There's been another sighting of the VW Polo in white. Sorry seems to be the easiest word. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know I've got a diploma. All right. That's Keelan Farm Shop, isn't it? It is. Very nice. You had a breakfast sandwich from there? No. Lovely, mate. Very nice. Out and about are Harry Jeffrey and Dave Lund from the Police Intercept team. We cover the whole of the West Yorkshire area. It's the third largest force. So uh, we've got a lot of area to cover, uh, but we, there's always plenty going on. They're winging their way over to Halifax following a tip-off. We've been guided by our neighbourhood policing colleagues. We've had some intel about a white VW Polo. So we're going to go out, see if we can get that spotted and get it stopped uh, and searched if the grounds allow. There's an intel marker for drugs on the car. However, that doesn't mean the person inside is involved. But six foot six Harry, known as Big H, is sure to get to the bottom of it. Three years ago, he decided to join the Jeffrey family trade of policing West Yorkshire. And before long, there's promising news about the suspect car. There's been another sighting of the VW Polo in white, so we'll just push through to Denholm area and see if we can sort of head it off before it gets back to Halifax. Jace, we've come up at tops to Denholm. It's not come this way, we're just turning on to 644 now. 
just as Dave's updating other pit units, they catch a glimpse of a white motor. Oh, oh. White Polo? Yeah. Could be it, that. Could be. It looks like an L Reg to me. Lads, we're just behind one, Big House and Den Home Road. At first glance, the car up ahead fits the bill. I'm going to try to get a bit closer and see if it's ours. So they close the gap to make sure. I'm thinking it is, but yeah. It is. Um, Lads, we are behind it, Brighouse and Denholm Road. General direction of Halifax. No vehicles for cover. The plan is to tail it until backup units arrive, when suddenly... It's going. Could we go in this standby? In a risky move, the driver brazenly overtakes, straight into the path of oncoming traffic. But the interceptors keep on its tail. We've got no cars for cover. It's doing normal road speeds at this moment in time. Stand by, it's uh, left hand indication, it's going into Tesco's. Tesco at Queensbury. Remarkably, it is one up, I think. The polo pulls up right in front of them. It's pulling up at the left, just outside front door. The pit team strike. Stay calm, mate. Until they know whether or not the intel is correct. Just keep your hands where you are. The driver's put in cuffs. Give us that hand first. Pull the hand. You detent this time under Section 28 Misuse of Drugs Act because we suspect some might be drugs in vehicles. Stay in car, OK? No drugs. What's your name? First things first, interceptors tackle the poor excuse for driving. The man who are driving. I know, I'm sorry. He's dodgy. I, <laughs> I know, I'm the, sorry, I'm yeah. sorry. I know what I did wrong. All right. Yeah, no, do you know what? what? Obviously, they were dawdling. All right, OK. So you're dawdling because be... it's dirty. Oh, worry. Yeah. yeah. I know, but do you know when they dawdle like that, you... you... See that car coming towards the other side? I know, That's I'm sorry, true. I'm sorry. I thought you were failing to stop for us. You stay there, kid. More of the team arrive to help with the search and the white polo is turned inside out. It turns out the marker for drugs was incorrect and no drugs are found. Next up, the driver. Right, mate, step out of the car for us, just stay in the crease of this door. He's out on you. No, you, mate, mate, just money. Just look at me, mate. Okay. Look at me, don't look what he's doing. Money, no camera, mate, it's all on camera, I know, okay? I can see you got a lot of money, right. okay? Money, mate, that's it. Loads of money claims he's had a right result at the car auction. Where have you sold the car? Uh, Brighouse. <laughs> what car? What I about, mate? I sold a two-ran. A Corsa and a Merc. It's a lie, mate. I'm not saying you're lying. However, the interceptors are suspicious about the driver's details and whether he should be on the road. We're just going to try to identify the driver because we have some information that he may be telling some porkies, so get to the bottom of this now. He's saying he's... We've got... Right, we'll have a look. What driver last year she got? Oh. You got it on you? Yeah. Dave has run the driver's name past control, but it doesn't add up. Got any idea on you? No. Nothing at all. After a bit more digging, yeah, but he's just oh, oh, the game's up. No. Says us. Says us. Says us. You can come clean now, oh, yeah. or you're getting locked up oh, for yeah, right. right. And it. Right. You got a driving license? Yeah. No. Didn't yeah. think you had. Yeah, Ban driver. Do you know what? I've had a such a good day, but I've bought some cars at auction and sold them. I had a good day, and what I've let myself down. The bad day doesn't end there. The car's getting seized. Good job getting the car off the road, him off the road. He'll go to court definitely for the driving matters. So it's another illegal driver off the roads. Um, so yeah, pleased. The driver was convicted of driving whilst disqualified received a further 10-month driving ban and had to pay £235 in fines, victim surcharge and costs. So we had intelligence on this car, so we knew we were looking for it, but the manner of driving, the way I overtook that vehicle onto oncoming traffic, 
any cop would have stopped him or even members of the public could have unlit in, I'm sure. So he drew attention to himself with that alone. The police intercept is back new next Monday at 8. Hot on the heels of car crime tonight, the traffic cops are cracking down on Grand Theft Auto as they take chase at 10. Before that, fighting crime as it happens against the clock. We've 60 minutes of real-time action with new police, Hour of Duty, next. He stood at the gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to stab police. Crime is on the rise. Armed with a axe and a machete. Trying to break into two separate houses. But come at the hour. More units, more units. Come at the interceptors. Get off! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's elite. What's on? Alongside their pursuit drivers. Contact, contact, stand by. On target with their firearms unit. Keep your heart free, just be there! In the air with their eye in the sky. Off and running, off and running. This is the front line in the fight against crime. Get on the floor! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! This is police interceptors. It's just another day in paradise. Coming up. A runaway wreaks havoc in Halifax. Accident, it's an accident, accident. It's gone wrong way, down a, down a carriageway and collided with members at public. You break to me free. A bloody encounter at the crack of dawn. Why are you doing that to me, this? Some people's worst nightmare, isn't it? When you're disturbed in your sleep, somebody inside your house. Move, move, move. And a supercharged foot race. Let's out, let's out, let's out, let's out, let's out, let's out. Go on. Through the centre of Leeds. Come here! It's a quiet evening in the outskirts. But there's something in the air. 600 horses roaring through Halifax. The proactive intercept team are after an Astra on false plates. With the pit team on its bumper and a marked car behind, speed six zero miles an hour. They need one more unit to box in the bad guy, which can't happen soon enough. As the convoy turns onto a two carriageway road, the target Astra switches lanes into oncoming traffic. The runaway's running parallel to two cop cars. And he's made a break off the slip road. The marked car cuts across the carriageway, just in time to spot the Astra snaking away. Yeah, it's going down towards the centre of Halifax. This way. This way. X-ray India 2 zero. we are now behind it. Speeds 47 miles an hour. Can we have an end pass please, a dog and T-Pat unit? They need reinforcements and, racing to intercept, two more members of the proactive intercept team, Dave Lunn and Harry Jeffrey. Clear left, clear left, clear left. Harry's no slouch behind the wheel, but he won't mind Dave driving if they reach the runaway in time to box him in. We've got a clone Astra make off from our colleagues. It's gone wrong way, down a, down a carriageway. Harry and Dave need to make up the numbers sharpish, because five miles away... Undertaking traffic. Just approaching Red ATS. Stand by, stand by. The runaway Astra is putting innocent drivers at risk. He flies through a red light on a wing and a prayer and really takes off. Still A629, speed 77 miles an hour. Vehicle uh, still failing to stop. Wrong side of the road, above motorway speeds. 
This guy is an accident waiting to happen. Wrong signature. Huddersfield Road. Huddersfield Road. Stand by. Wrong way round the traffic lights. Hospital. Wrong side of the carriageway, and the wrong one jumps another red light. Vehicle did go wrong there on the carriage. They've got to get him stopped before someone is hurt. Luckily, Dave and Harry are closing in, carefully negotiating red lights themselves. They know the threat a runaway like this can pose. Pursuits are inherently dangerous, and unfortunately, members of the public are sometimes put at risk. Um, we, all, we try and minimise that risk as much as we can. Apologies, yes, yes. But two miles away at the sharp end of the pursuit... Zero miles an hour. Minimising risk isn't on the Astra driver's agenda. He's playing wrong way roulette again. And interceptors decide to abort the pursuit. But the runaway may have run out of luck. Accident, it's an accident. Get him. At around 50 miles an hour, he crashes head on into an oncoming hatchback. And as a stray wheel rolls down the carriageway, miraculously, the runaway driver is off like a shot, pursued by a sprinting copper with no thought for the carnage he's left behind. Let's get into woods. It looks like they've lost him. Still A629, speed 77 miles an hour. Vehicle uh, still failing to stop. Interceptors are after a dangerous driver. So we've got a clone Astra make off from our colleagues. With the risks to innocent motorists climbing, <laughs> cops have called off the pursuit. But the suspect's taken one chance too many. Taking the wrong carriage for the third time, the runaway Astra ploughs head-on into a Fiat 500 at sickening speed. Remarkably, the innocent driver only has minor injuries, and the suspect somehow flees the devastation he's left behind. Uh, priority here is making sure members of the public are all right. Um, they're being looked after by colleagues. We're making our way to the area. I think the car and ambulance for a Dave and Harry arrive in total chaos. The Fiat, hit head on, has been thrown off the road. Airbags have deployed, and it's a total wreck. The runaway Astra has had its passenger side demolished. As you can see, it's quite a substantial impact. This streets are going up to block it off up there. Right. So I don't know where they are, went they off chasing. We've had to look for them, that's all. Yeah, yeah, they're blocking road off at the top. Right, yeah. Yeah. This is going the wrong way down Pageway. We did abort, as soon as we did it. So he's done it up there, has he? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. aborted there. Somehow, the suspect ran away from this. And it's nothing short of a miracle that the Fiat driver wasn't seriously injured come to a scene of carnage, unfortunately. Thankfully, everyone's OK, but people simply think there's no consequences to driving dangerously, taking a car and taking a chase from the police. This is your consequence right here, members of the public, damaged vehicles, putting themselves at risk of members of the public. It's unacceptable. With paramedics confirming the Fiat driver is OK... Right, steady now. ..the dog team comes in to hunt for those responsible. He's up! Stay! Police dog Diesel heads straight for a canal. I won't surprise me if they've gone across, you know. But Diesel's more interested in something on this side of the water. Good boy, good boy, that's nice. Good boy. It's a good boy. Right, well, that's... That's the jacket discarded by one of the suspects. It's wet through. 
So Jesse has been in the canal. He's going to be wet through. I'll take that back to the colleagues. Under the coat. How do we know crap crystals? What looks like a bag of Class A's. The signs are the owner of this coat is involved in dealing drugs. Good boy, that's nice. Right, just look at this jacket. Two phones, surprise, surprise. Uh, what's the... It's like crap crystals to me or some description. Under here. Somebody's night, is it? Load of cash. <laughs> Someone's unlucky night. They've deliberately hidden this underneath the tree roots, what Diesel's indicated at. Um, it's been recently touched by humans. Diesel found the stash, but not the suspect who fled the Astra. Given the carnage he caused and the danger in which he placed members of the public, the interceptors are determined to catch up with the driver and the investigation is ongoing. This is where our investigation starts now. We'll get this vehicle back to the recovery yard, have it forensically examined. It doesn't stop here, it's just the beginning, hopefully. With a good investigation, we can track them down and bring them to justice. An interceptor shift can change direction faster than a runaway bad guy. One minute you're leisurely en route to clear traffic congestion. X-ray Romeo 74, can we have fire please? Uh, this Merc is on fire. The next, you're facing down a fireball. In this game, it pays to be reactive. And this morning, dog handler Steve Huntington is reacting to a sensitive car theft. It's a vehicle that's been stolen with keys, but the, um, the latest information is that two of the suspects are only teenagers. The stolen car is a white VW Polo, and a shout comes over the radio, it's been spotted. It's uh, a white male driving it. Didn't look as young as 40. Stopping. So it's going down Ollerton Road towards the road there. Playing catch up here. <coughs> Steve's pet hate is burglars, but he's taken plenty of car thieves over the years. However, he's not happy about today's turn of events. The kids, you know, they should be at home in bed. It's half past four in the morning. And yet they're, um, they're driving around the streets of Bradford in a stolen car, 13, 14 year old. Um, it's, it's scary, they shouldn't be out and about. But as the sun rises on a brave new day, Steve Shift is about to take a new direction. Ongoing, ongoing burglary suspect in the house. Being restrained by Carla's father. Just had a call from um, occupants of the house. They've uh, disturbed two people breaking into or inside the house. They've managed to detain one male. Um, the second one's run off. Um, but it sounds like the um, the male that they've got is um, putting up a bit of a fight and a struggle with the uh, occupant. Leaving the junior car thieves to other units, Steve's got a date with his pet hate. It's the worst nightmare, isn't it, when you're woken up by someone in your house? Cops from all over are descending on the address. Well, has it suddenly gone mental, hasn't it? Five o'clock in the morning. And it's not about to get less crazy. The burglar's been handed over to the cops. You're breaking me, You're breaking me, 
this. Well, like, stay in there, right? You should try to spit out in your face, and this is what happens to you. You're breaking me free. You're breaking me down. Why are you doing that to me, this? The burglar has already resisted arrest and threatened to spit in an officer's face. Leaving him to fellow interceptors, Steve speaks to the victim of the burglary. You all right? Yeah, I'm up with the You're the one who... I'm just like a... pair of bankies. Bankies? What sort of... What van is it? Mercedes. The homeowner thinks two men were trying to steal his van and broke in looking for keys. Which doors are coming? This one. All the back, can we have a look? Yeah. All right then, all right then. Well, let me up then. The suspect has been put in a spit hood to prevent him making good his earlier threat. Okay. And where were you when he's coming? Sleeping the and yeah, have you had a bit of a... That's right, yeah. It seems the homeowner disturbed the housebreaker, gave him a few right hands and held him down. Yeah. Right. Right. You're going to talk to me, yeah? You're right talking to me before telling me you're going to spit in my face. You know, sitting him up. It's the wall. <coughs> Mike. You got it, mate? Yeah. Do you want to give me the wall, yeah? The burglar doesn't look too clever after his brush with the victim. You can see he's got some facial injuries where the last thing we want is A and him spitting and B him spitting blood. Um, so that's why it's spit has gone straight on. We're just going to change it now for a fresh one. We'll just wait for ambulance to come. The basic bit of kit. All right. I'd say that's a no. It's fair to say he picked the wrong house to break into. Hard-working guy, decent family. Um, salt at earth, you know. The, um, he's up at Cracker Dawn. He's got a paper shop or off licence. Um, and because of that, he's, he's sleeping downstairs. Um, so that is not disturbing his family who were upstairs. And then things like this break into his house, disturbing him and his family, putting, you know, potentially putting them all at risk. He didn't know what he's got, um, as in weapons. And at the end of the day, he's protected himself and his family. What was the door? Closed it behind him, and then uh, he walks in. And you know, five yards in. I was going to jump to him. I gave him a few hours there. I put him down. I pinned him down. And this when we called the police. Yeah, he's got injured as a result. Well, tough. That's what you get when you break into people's houses. You know, he's got a right to protect his property and his family, and he has done. That's off to him. Personally, I should <laughs> put him on, on an island. And leave him there. The alleged second burglar was never caught. However, the teenagers in the stolen polo were tracked down and are under investigation. The car was returned to its owner. As for the man who picked the wrong Englishman's castle to invade, it turns out he's a career criminal with 47 convictions, many of them for burglary. And he'll have time to reflect on that career because though the court didn't put him on an island and leave him there, they did give him four and a half years inside. Still to come. Second vehicle take off side, third vehicle take near side, fourth rear. Standby. High stakes boxing on the M62. Go. Lights off, yeah. Right. Patience wears thin in Leeds city centre. Me. Get some cuffs here! You strang I don't care! And Scooter Boy run around. He's doing a left, left, left onto Herschel Road. Herschel Road. Requesting TPAP, please. Uh, single crew. Uh, requesting other units.
West Yorkshire interceptors police 780 square miles, from Ilkley in the north to Hepworth in the south. They mostly nick proper Yorkshire criminals. But sometimes suspect southerners stray onto their patch. We'll try and pull three empty box on him to prevent it turning into a pursuit or a teapot. And they're after a car stolen this morning in Cambridgeshire. Helicopters above, so that can keep monitoring of it. If it does get too stupid and go the wrong way down motorway, then everybody will back off and they'll just let helicopters follow it. Just confirm he's just alongside the uh, blue Arctic now with the white cap. The 150 miles per hour Merc was allegedly stolen earlier this morning and is believed to be travelling with a second suspect in a silver Citroen. Did you say you think the uh, is in convoy with the silver car in front? I think it is. Everything that that silver car has done, the Mercedes has done. Yeah, I'm just uh, we've got that visual. That's also in the same lane at the moment. God's own country has rolled out the blue carpet for this pair. South Yorkshire interceptors are already on their tail. Now the best of the West are ready to receive them with open cells. Four, open vehicle. Four five, we're uh, behind 201. So what, two vehicles, one's a Mercedes. And one's a Citroen. A.D. Fickling is just the driver for a job like this. He's passed every test known to man and is a master of T-Pack, boxing in baddies with multiple cars. Pastor, I'll just find out if this one behind me is T-Pack train. Can we just confirm that all of us have T-Pack train, please? 459, two one T-Pack train. I'm just going past 30, I am T-Pack train. Today's tactics call for four specialist drivers. When the non t pack units drop back. They currently have just three. Have we got any ETA for the four t pack units? The fourth car is just coming through 27. A5 and behind the uh, unmarked dog car, t pack train. All their highly skilled ducks are in a row. Yeah, it's uh, over there, look. It's over there, look. See it. It's two cars in lane three. But the suspects may have got wind of Yorkshire's finest. Ten past three, one. Uh, the black Mercedes is lane four at the moment. The two cars are driving alongside each other. Uh, don't know if they're having a chat. Uh, they are absolutely parallel. Yeah. It's up there, yeah. Using a phone at the wheel is bad enough. Hobnobbing across the fast lanes of the M62 is certifiable. Coming past 3 1, uh, the uh, Mercedes is now pulled in front of the uh, Citroën and he is lane 3 out of 4. We can only hit one car at once. They can only safely T pack one vehicle. And with the Merc pulling away, it's decision time. Yes, there is sufficient gap. There's at least uh, 20 cars length now. They decide to put everything on black. Silver car you'll be passing shortly. Uh, the black car is probably uh, 50 yards in front of the BQ lobby. Ready? Second vehicle take off side, third vehicle take near side, fourth rear. Stand by. Steady. Go. Lights on. Yeah. Engine off. It's over at the speed of blue light. Open the door. Seen from the air, a pack of interceptors flies past the Citroen, while other cars drop back to slow traffic behind. The pack closes in on the Merc like a high-speed police escort. And it strikes. One in front, one inside, one outside, one behind, game over. Welcome to Yorkshire. Hands out. Out. Exterior, it's a stop, stop, no injury, no damage. What's happened, sir? I'll tell you in a second. The driver of the stolen Merc is in a marked car before you can say, 
banging preemptive strike team. Good stop, that mate. Meanwhile, the back markers have brought the M62 to a standstill. Bad news for sales reps, lorry drivers, and Mrs. Brown's Scarborough mini brake. But not without benefits for the cops. From MP31, there, that Citroen is behind you as well, in, stuck in the traffic. There's a silver Citroen that's been running with it. It's in lane two behind us now. So some of the units that are behind us, can they get the uh, secure the Citroen while we've got the carriageway stationary? Let the reverse slow mo T pack commence. Yeah, it's a true moving monitor is in lane two, lead vehicle, out of the uh, queue in traffic. How about a game till the traffic gets moving? I spy with my little eye something beginning with. You're nicked. Should have stayed in Cambridgeshire, mate. Stolen. So it's been stolen today with keys. From inside, so they could have Oh, no, I've, I've already had it pushed. I've requested it. It's from a burglar today. The Mercedes was reported stolen earlier in the day. So, your friend's bought it and you're driving it back. But the driver is pleading ignorance. What insurance do you have to drive that? Pardon? What policy of insurance do you have to drive it? Uh, I don't know, actually. It's told me the insurance on the car and uh, all the paperwork is uh, Thank you. So, Ding, ding, round two. Where did your friend buy it from? Past Doncaster. How far past Doncaster? Uh, maybe 50 miles. 50 miles past Doncaster? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. That car that you're in is stolen. Stolen? Yes. What do you mean stolen? I mean it's stolen. Stolen car? Yes. Jesus Christ, can be stolen. Why? Because he bought this car, paid the money, he sold the how much did he? How much did he pay for it? I don't know, actually. The going price for this Merc is about 11 grand. Can't expect him to remember pin money like that. Did he pay cash? He paid cash, I think so, yeah. Or you know, I'm not sure about this, because I was... It seems that this isn't the driver's first brush with the law. And why were you in prison? Uh, I went to the court, yeah. And then, I don't know, the judge sent me to the prison because I used to drive in the car as well, yeah? Mm. And uh, I've been a little bit drunk. And then they've banned you from driving. Banned me? Yeah, you've been banned until the 24th of the 5th. Well, they'll have told you in car. Uh, Give that a moment to sink in. Does that mean uh, disqualified from the driving, yeah, you know? Yeah, you're not allowed to drive. You've got no insurance either. My God. No further action was taken against the driver of the Citroen. As for the band driver, who claimed that his mate paid cash for a Merc, he was found guilty of driving while disqualified and driving without insurance and was jailed for four months. No further action was taken in relation to the burglary. Cambridgeshire Naughty Boys nil, Yorkshire United one. I've actually stopped a driver today who's smaller than you. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I thought, God. But you haven't stopped anyone older than you, though, have you? No. Well, like I say, you can't cheat it, so there's no point in trying to. Interceptors read wrong'uns like a book. Keep going like that, keep going, don't stop, don't stop. I could hear it then, you put your tongue over it. Yeah, it did. I can hear it, it stopped. But they also appreciate more genteel literature. Charlotte Bronte, round new abroad. Hey, boy, it's going a bit quick, And they're expert speed readers. These streets were fine for Bronte's horse and carriage, but they're a tight squeeze in a two ton X5. And Nick's got his work cut out, keeping up with the nippy scooter. So Romeo, three, seven. Which hangs a left in the blink of an eye. The Beamer takes an eternity by comparison. Yeah, three, seven, uh, there's a lot of scooters here to stop there. Uh, front of Thornton Road. One occupant on the vehicle, helmet, uh, on speed is five euro mile an hour. Have other units in there, uh, head back, please. He's weaving all over the shop. Sticking out a peg 
speedway style to balance on corners. Yeah, it's doing a left, 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 uh, Bronte place. No time for a selfie by the blue plaque. End of Bronte place, he's doing a right, 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 uh, wrong side of the road, heading back towards Thornton Road. Yes, yes, yes that's affirmative. Uh, rider has got a helmet, uh, just gone out of sight now. Stand by. West Yorkshire have only recently reversed the policy of not pursuing bikes. But stopping them is no mean feat. Just approaching the double uh, roundabout, uh, straight across at the roundabout, uh, continuing Thornton Road, speed 40 mile an hour. Nick has the advantage on straight wide roads and Scooter Boy soon looking nervously over his shoulder and weaving to prevent an overtake. One occupant on the scooter. Another speedway turn. Left, left, left onto Roadsway. And another on the back of that one. He's doing a left, left, left onto Herschel Road. Herschel Road. 710, please confirm the US TPAP train. Yes, yes, TPAP train requesting TPAP, please. Uh, single crew uh, requesting other units. Vehicle's gone off road uh, through some bollards, end of Herschel Road. Unfortunately, I, I am unable to follow. Please, Oh well, never mind. A little bit of a pursuit there with a scooter. Don't know why. Um, could have been a stolen one. It could have been no insurance, no license. Um, was initially saw it on uh, Bronte Road. And as Ms Bronte might have put it, reader, I lost him. Hey ho, lost it at this time, but you never know, it might pop up again. Catching scooters is a patience game. But the chance will come again as sure as night follows day. We've got two motorbikes. Uh, in tandem with each other, no helmets going up the uh, pavement towards Leeds City Centre. It's the early hours, and Tom and Wayne have just had their own unsuccessful brush with two wheelers. We get Leeds watch having a look round, please. Um, we've had two motorbikes make off from us uh, just off Westgate, coming into Leeds. Um, I think last one was seen um, Wellington Street towards City Centre. Wayne's had the runaround from scooters in West Yorkshire for years. He knows the odds are against them making an arrest. The two bikes, both two up, no helmets, balaclavas. Like this, you mean? Oh. Bang in the middle of Leeds, bold as brass, these balaclavered Burks bowl straight past Tom and Wayne on the pavement, parallel with a pursuing cop and Tom's ready to go man versus scooter on the pavement. Yanka Juliet 6-7. But the eager interceptor can save his breath. Get in. Oh, not to... Because the scooters had an accident. So they're going to be running towards us. Oh, yeah, he's out and running. And the dismounted riders have legged it. Move, move, move. Tom's itching to get out of the blocks. Let's out, let's out, let's out, let's out, let's out, let's out. Go on, come on. Come here! Come here! Go on, mate, leave it with me. Come here! Having got in front, Wayne's ready to make an entrance. Grab him! Oh, help, sorry, sorry. But Tom makes the collar and a picture emerges. Oh, you don't have to hurt me. Of a sorry suspect. You strangling me. Get some cuffs here. You strangling me. I don't care. Right. Who put pedestrians at risk. Right, go back. You lots up put them in it then. They're just driving. Chris. I want to be driving. It doesn't matter. Can you put him in your car? Yeah, yeah. Take him. Yeah. Take him out. It doesn't matter how you get them, as long as you get them. Right, Tom? Wasn't the uh, finest exit of the vehicle, chipping over myself, but we got him. Let's have a little action replay of the event. Right hand on the headlining, top marks for technique, a textbook drop of the left shoulder, and 
Oh, schoolboy error. It's a four from the judges for the dismount. But a solid ten for end product. Because I'm willing to bet Mike's probably nicked. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What? You know full well you shouldn't have been on that bike. That nicked bike. Theft of motor vehicle stolen. You locked up, theft of motor vehicle. Dangerous driving. And it's back to custody to lick their wounds. I've, uh, I've cut my leg and it hurts a lot. Um, but, you know, we carried on going um, and we caught him. It remains to be seen exactly what he was caught for. There's a question to be asked at what they're doing at four o'clock in the morning um, with uh, in the Leeds City Centre, whether they're out committing crime or whether they are just out for a joyride, I don't know. But uh, certainly for that young man, it's come to an end tonight because he's in the cells. That young man was found guilty of dangerous driving. As for the cannabis, which was found on him back at the Nick, he received a conditional discharge. No action was taken against him for theft of the motorbike. Still to come. 3 1, urgent. Ben and Matt have the speed they need on four wheels. Turn it off now. Engine off. But a foot pursuit is a race too far. <laughs> he was like 20, wasn't he? 15 younger than, younger than me. I got all this stuff on. Never got with her. It's a grey day in Halifax, but Ben and Matt are praying for a streak of purple on their patch. Looking for a, um, a purple. Don't know. Purple 308. But before they spot their purple Peugeot, two lads leaving a blue golf set off the spider sense. Ben thinks they're acting suspiciously. I, uh, give his keys. Huh? Give his keys. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's trained in Kung Fu and Jiu Jitsu. He's a master at sizing up an opponent's weaknesses. I'll just get a car. Yeah. So rather than run with 10 <laughs> kilos of kit... Three... Two. He zeroes in on the abandoned car. Three, two, thank you. Can you put a log on for us, please, for an abandoned vehicle? You just go, have, have a quick look. I'm just going to drive round block. Right. Heading backwards to find the high tailing pair from the golf, Ben leaves Matt to check it out. Matt's a former fitness instructor who plays squash and works out. But this finely tuned greyhound was asleep in the traps today. <laughs> so, to be honest, I blame Matt. He's a bit slow getting out of the car. He's an old man now. He's, what is he, 34, 35? And he, he goes on about him used to be a fitness instructor and he's fit as a butcher's dog. I admit I'm fat and slow. And obviously I've got a bad chest at the moment, so... As I said, I can't really run after anyone at the moment. There's no sign of the runaways. So, after a lap in the Beamer, it's back to the golf at a leisurely pace. Oh, well, that were hard work finding him, wasn't it? We've been driving up there for the last 25 minutes, not knowing where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't find you. What have you got, then? The car contained enough bagged-up weed to point to dealing. So we've got... Big bag of um, little bags. It's obviously dealing cannabis around Halifax. So it'd be about 20, 30 bags of cannabis. So it's like about two grand probably there. So good little stop. The golf's been seized, but not before the interceptors recover registration documents from its glove box. Ah, oh, there's a. Uh, oh, got him. Got an each person. 
I didn't see the passenger. I saw him, but I didn't see his face, but I saw the driver. Um, descriptions. <laughs> That's a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Registered owner looks just like one of the lads who ran off. The person driving the car, we've got, we saw him jump out of the car, we've seen him run off, we've got him on our video. Unfortunately for him, he's left the, um, the new Keeper V5 in the good box with his details on. It's insured to him, he's known to us, we've got his picture on our database. Which may spare Sport Billy's blushes after his no-show at the races. He was like 20, wasn't he? 15 younger, younger than me. I've got all this stuff on. Never caught with her. If you say so. It's like an extra stone, is this? At least. You're a fit lad, though. Not as fit as you, Ben. Your body's a temple. Not as fit as yours. My body's not a temple. But your instincts are spot on. Because back on the road, they clock another VW radiating wrongness. A shifty look from the driver aroused suspicion, so Ben spins round to head him off. So I've seen the uh, VW bar in front. Looks a bit suspicious. Uh, Asian driver will look at us. Oh, what's he doing? Come on, you absolute nugget. Let's have a quick look at him. As they turn the corner, the suspect floors it, overtakes a learner driver and heads for the hills. 3-1, urgent. Oh, he's seen sense. Turn it off, off now. Engine off. Yeah, I think he's stopping some bank. What's his keys? Get out of the car. Do you have to record me? Get the car. Can you get off now? I'll get in the car. Get the car. Not record me. That's right. But they're recording us. Okay. I've got what we're doing to get in our car. All right. Is it okay if you don't record? No. I don't want to be recorded. Right. Get in the car now before we put you in the car. I don't want you driving like an idiot. Right. Look, I'll help you. You drive like an idiot. Get in the car. It's not your choice. Stop leaning in the car. Can you get off No, me? no, get off we're me. not getting off you. So get off get me. Get right. get in the car. Look, I'm not resisting. I'll right. get in the car. Well, get in the car and do what you're told. Get off me. This could be so much easier. Hallelujah. Have you got a licence? Yeah. Have you got insurance? Yeah, yeah. So just explain to me then why you had a gamble at putting people's lives at risk. It was... For, for nothing. I'm sick of saying that this road's track like a racetrack and people don't care. Uh, and you're just you're a prime example of what's what the driving standards like and why we're out and about and what we're doing to combat it. The driver faces a section 59 warning for poor driving. If he offends again within 12 months, his car will be seized. Right, I'm gonna deal with you now is you're gonna be issued a section 59 warning on a police reform act. Have you got one anywhere? I'm not going to lie to you. You've got one. Well, unfortunately, we'll be taking your vehicle then, lad. I don't know when I'll and you... one, but I, well, I had one a long time ago. Where's the vice has gone? Whether or not he keeps his car hinges on how long ago a long time ago was. Let's have a look. Less than a year and he's walking home. When was it this year? Last year? It was a while ago. I cannot remember. It's for 12 months. Yeah, Lots of 12 months. I don't know if it's... We see where a while ago was it months ago, years ago? I have absolutely no idea. I just know it was a long time ago. Honestly. It's not bringing him up for 59 because it'd be on his PNC and it's well, it might not be on my name, that's why. But on vehicle, no, it's on a different vehicle, right? Old car, why, why would it not be on your name? It's my mate. Oh, there it is. Years ago, months ago. Oh, look, 13th of uh, February this year. Ah, five weeks ago. It were a long time ago. A long time ago. Well, at least. <laughs> I'm just a month. At least a month ago. Months. No, nine, nine months. No. This 59 will be harder to forget. That's for you. This is season notice, your car's been seized. OK. Mr Memory has 14 days to pay £150 recovery or his car will be crushed. For driving without due care and attention, he was fined £204 and received three penalty points. As for the golf seized earlier, insufficient evidence was found to link the keeper of the car to the cannabis inside and no further action was taken. Bed and Matt must content themselves with taking a sizeable amount of drugs and a nuisance driver off the streets of Yorkshire. I'm happy. 
Right, okay. Shall we get some dinner? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> There's more new Interceptors next Monday night at 8. Forced to watch some of the weirdest TV ever, John Richardson goes channel hopping, brand new on Comedy Central tomorrow night at 9. But new next here on Channel 5, the devastation of one punch and a really tough ask for Norwich detectives. Police suspect number one is gripping stuff and it's here in just a moment.